Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are getting ready for the intense action. We have the St. Clair Saints Academy Counter-Strike 2 team versus Fanshawe Fuels. And the knife round is just getting underway to allow the teams to decide what sides they're going to get started on here. We're going to be on Mirage, one of my personal favorite maps. And you can already see Fanshawe, they are looking to be losing this knife round. So the Saints are going to have first say as to what side they're going to be starting on. But the action is just going to start boiling from here and the Saints are going to get us started here. They're going to be playing on T side. That's what they've decided on. And, or, actually, no, they're still deciding. Yep, okay, see? They're switching around. That's okay, what the okay, Knife okay. Rod is for. The Saints <laughs> are going to be starting on CT instead. Seems to be the side that they're favoring. All right, so CT, what do you think is going to be their strategy here for the defense? What do you think we're going to see for the offense? Well, generally with Mirage, and I feel like this is the case for a lot of maps in Counter-Strike in general, you want to make sure you have at least one person securing mid. It's easy to win long range picks mid, but you also have access to both points from there. So the Saints are going to want to try to make sure they can lock it down while also being flexible on the rotation between both sides. Thankfully with Mirage, rotating from one side to the other is generally pretty safe because there aren't a lot of access points from the offensive side of the map to get to the rear end where you just rotate. So if they need rotations, they'll be able to do so pretty comfortably. But Vanshaw is pushing them down straight away. Defined one is going to get a clean headshot on JVH, but Petro is going to get revenge. They're already on the site. The bomb has already been planted as well. Petro getting up another kill. A third now. Three for Petro. Can he make it? Four! Yes, he can! Ooh. He might just get the ace if his team lets him, but no. Andy is going to take out the last member of Vanshaw Fuel, and the Saints are going to get the defuse for the round. Ooh, really good round, really quick there. Uh, Saints just clearing it out, getting the point. Yeah, okay, the bomb was placed down, Dude. but they took care of that really cleanly. Yes, clean is probably the best way I'd put it. They did end up losing two, losing two, so it's not the cleanest it possibly could have went. But in terms of how that piss around started, Banshaw basically poured through Palace, and that's usually just GG from there. And they even got the bomb plant down, but Saints were able to retake it pretty strong thanks to Petro's immaculate marksmanship. So the Saints are going to have a pretty smooth sailing uh, round two. They're going to have three rifles and two M uh, SMGs, so they're going to be able to push down uh, anyone trying to go through the house. I think that might be the strat. Yeah, putting one on ladder, and then you have one in apartments to lock it down. Um, Rum rotating through mid as well. So the Saints are going to have a complete lockdown, and uh, Fanshawe is going to have a hard time getting through anywhere. They are rocking the Galils. Um, good thing they equipped that, thankfully, with the new uh, CS2 inventory system. It's not always guaranteed that your opponents are going to be rocking the Galils, so they are going to be picking it up, and in fact, they're going to have a lot of use out of it, as they are going to be able to get the first pick off on one of the Saints, and I believe he was holding an M4, so that's a really valuable pickoff. Petro is going to use the M4 to take down Tyler S. Uh, that's going to be a trade here, but it looks like Fanshawe is going to be trying to push through Palace. Underneath the ladder, they're going to have one Saint, JBH, making sure that nobody's going to get through. They have one in tunnels on mid. Could be trying to fake a rotation, but let's see where they're going to want to put the pressure first. If they want to make it known that they're on Palace, or if they want to try to make noise mid to get some attention drawn out, they can force a rotation they already have one peeking out Ooh. there. Jacob is going to get the first pick up on Petro underneath there. JBH is going to go down, and they're going to be smoking up the site. Looks to be the case that Fanshawe is going to have domination over this site. Um, Saints, just with the FAMAS, push through. He's going to use his MP9 to take down... Uh, I can't even say that name. Jeez. <laughs> Nylander is going to take down Rai, but it's just Miggy left with the FAMAS. He's going to use it to get one, two HP. The helmet and armor doing so much to keep him in this game. Smoke is going to go out. Bullets are going to start flying. He's going to get dinks through the box. going to take him down at the Fanshawe field squad, pulling off the impossible to take the pistol, the lost pistol round, round two. And now things are going to get evened up just a little bit. Yeah, no, definitely a little bit more of a messy round this time. Very. Um, <laughs> things going one side than the other. But this is kind of what we were talking about in the pregame here. Mm -hmm. We're seeing both sides being pretty strong and not really sure who's going to win this one, right? We were talking about the rivalry, and the rivalry is well-founded here. Uh, oh, yeah. We just see that the skill level on both sides is just so close that going into this next round here, we're going to see it's just... It's going to be hard to tell who's going to win. 
Absolutely. Looking on the side of the Saints, they are going to opt for a pistol round themselves. Armor and a helmet's going to go on JBH, but the rest of them are just going in this bear. Fanshawe opting for a little bit of a semi buy, semi full buy, but we're going to lose Rai to the infamous internet connection. So, probably going to have to pause after this, but just talking about the state of the game in general, how things are going so far. Uh, or are they still playing this one? I'm not sure. Because uh, they're definitely moving around. I think they are going to have to play through this round. Saints, Andy's going to be lined up. There's two Saints right there waiting for the entrance. Petro's going to get the one tap. Tyler Hiss is going to go down, unfortunately. Fanshawe feels offense is going to be moving with multiple Molotov's going to force Andy one down. But they have the threat of Fanshawe down mid. And use the back 10 to get one three kill. Another one through the smoke. A headshot on JBH. Saints are really feeling the pain right now. Andy's still in the middle of connector, just doing his best to make sure he can be a force to be reckoned with, but it is a lot easier said than done when you have a, mini, a million threats coming at you from every possible angle and you don't know where they're going to be showing up next. Miggy also feeling the pressure on CT spawn, but he finds the headshot he needs and a clean body shot to get a quick and easy kill. Miggy is going to get taken down by Nylander. It's just Miggy left, throwing out the frag, doing a good amount of damage, but it's not going to be enough to do anything significant. He's holding on to the back and he wants to do five of the accuracy. The flash is going to make it so that he's not going to have a chance to stop G's from taking him down. Like another round four, Fanshawe Fuel. Saints, unfortunately, did end up losing one of their players to a disconnect. I'm not too sure how that played out. Uh, that was a fake I think disconnect. they're back now. Yeah, see him back now. I know if there's a false alarm, I wasn't paying attention to how many Saints were still up in there, but whether or not that's the case, we're still going strong here. Uh, timeout, they're going to be able to just really plan out their next strategies here and like I was gonna mention a little bit before I'm really liking how I'm seeing both teams playing they're playing reserved but not scared I really like how Fanshawe is taking their offensive approach especially on a map like Barrage you do have the opportunity to sit and wait um, two different entry points they have for B side um, and the A side or sorry two entry points they have for A side um, so they can split to either go for palace or to go for tunnel I like that they're taking it slow and really making the Saints consider where they're gonna to use their resources best yeah for sure and as we can see here saints going for another eco round which is interesting um because this is like two eco rounds in a row that we're seeing right um so definitely something a little bit interesting to see in terms of their macro and how they want to spend their money uh but from that it seems that they're trying to hold down this area really really strongly like a really big choke point for them and from that macro side i mean it's hard to oh hold on here we got a double kill or two kills uh one from defiant one and one from I, that was the one that you were calling cheese i think uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no uh, turning this into a 3v5 yeah five is uh it's not ideal for them is it not at all but it's still far from impossible. If you're looking at the angles that the Saints are holding, these are all perfect deagle angles. We have Rai watching the, the catwalk connection, and you can also peek up to apartments to see if you can find any heads peering through there. Um, it's just going to be a little bit scary seeing if you can find any Deagle is not going to be the dream for him. Rai CS is going to go down. I even find the headshot, but there's still two more Saints left. Unfortunately, they're both in the same spot, and he's going to find one headshot. They think they're not going to be. They need to watch market. But you have another Saint coming out through there, JBH, they have no idea where he is. If he can come around and find the right moment to go strike, but he's not going to get the kill. And around the corner, Cheese is going to come out and put him down. This is from Fine One. That's going to be three rounds for Fanshawe Fuel against Saints. Just single round coming off of that pistol. Yep. All right. So now they just came off the pistol round, or well, their self-imposed pistol round, <laughs> aka eco round. Um, so we're going to be seeing, yeah, Saints here pulling out the M4s, uh, just full M4 by. Yeah, no full choice. M4 by. No ops, no nothing. Just going to stick with that. Um, and I th I'm seeing a lot of utility uh, coming out on the side of Banshaw. So they're they're full utility here. Yeah, they got uh, nothing else to spend the money on. Yeah, true. As well. uh, it really helps make your next a lot better, especially if you're trying to push B. There really only is one way to push through B in apartments. It's just with a lot of utility, a lot of smokes, a lot of flashes, at least in my experience. So they're going to opt to push through A instead, walk through the fire. JB is just going to be watching that angle. 
and he's lethal with that M4. And even more lethal is Petro, and Minky isn't gonna find the kills there with one of them with a frag grenade. Petro in that cheeky little corner. Nylander is gonna be able to find Miggy, but JBH should be able to get the kill on Cheese and Nylander in response. That's gonna be around for the Saints. They found their rifles, they found their opportunity, and they ran with it. Gonna be tying this up. Well, not close to tying this up now, it's two to three. Yeah, no, definitely coming back on top on the side of St. Clair here. They said, all right, you know what? We're going to go for two eco rounds, because why not? And then we're going to buy everything we can, because we got the money for it. And yeah, I mean, having those M4s, having that extra utility that they didn't have in those past rounds, definitely put them uh, at an advantage. And now here we're seeing when they're more equally matched in terms of utility and weapons uh, what the matches can really look like for sure now with the Saints holding a huge grenades, they are going to, to use them effectively as well smokes off on mid making their next approach destination a little bit more hard to discern but we still have the rotations coming through shots are being fired but none of them finding their marks so far Saints are looking very it's like a, a chessboard and all the pawns are just moved up one space with the spawn. They're all holding the line down. Coming out from the underground tunnels. Gonna little, have a little bit of an exchange there. He's gonna be cheekily watching through the boarded up window. Tyler S with three HP is gonna be found by Rice CS on the back of the T location. Gonna get rotations through to be cleared out there, but as they find that moment to the strike, Banshaw Fuel pushes up onto a site, and it's just going to be JBH, but they're facing him from Petro, he's going to find his mark, and the rest of them going down, they're pushing up by this, he's going to find his on Highlander, and they're going to be trying to rotate through mid now, flashing it out, just to get an opportunity for push up, but there's one off, I didn't even know an off was picked up in this round, uh, an off was purchased? JBH. Yeah, and that's going to be in the hands of the Saints now, and in Ooh. the hands of Andy S, no less, if you want watched the uh, Battle of Windsor at all uh, on Sunday, you'll know what he is capable of with this gun. It, he, it's, it's, it's like a force of nature. Really scary uh, when he's holding it. Hopefully I'm not jinxing him too much, but now Fanshawe Fuel has to be a little nervous. They're going to be doing a go round themselves, all holding on to Tech Nines and Beagles, and they're going to try to make use of this round. 3-3 three, three now. Yeah, definitely a uh, little bit more singular sided right now in terms of weaponry and utility because, of course, eco rounds are neat. Um, but yeah, that op. All right, let's talk a little bit about the op. I heard there was a little bit of a rumor that the op felt weird uh, in CS2. So the transition from CSGO to CS2, a lot of pros were saying that the op felt weird. Thoughts? Haven't heard that myself, but the op always felt weird for me. That's why I never used it. Why? But I think this <laughs> might be a skill issue. What this op is going to afford for the Saints at least the ever theoretically. Especially since Fanshaw is reeling um, economically, if they really not have a lot of money to work with, it just makes mid completely inaccessible, basically, um, or wherever Andy's going to want to hold down. But Miggy, spot. trigger discipline would have gone a long way here, but it doesn't matter. He's going to be able to find one headshot through a wooden beam, the other one just in general, but holding the nade in the wrong moment, in the wrong place, Tyler S walks out and gets a beautiful one tap with the people. Palace seems to be a very common pushing point for Fanshaw. JBH is going to find a very clean shot onto Nylander. Cheese is going to go down to JBH as well. And like I said, Andy with the off holding it mid. No rotation is going to be going through. But now he's going to be going through the tunnel or alley. He's going to be coming up. See if he can find any pushes through. Going up the ramp now. He sees that the site's clear. I think he can hear some footsteps on the right side. On the stairs near connector. He knows someone's here and he knows exactly where. He's got the gun mark on him. I think they actually traded there. JBH ready to swing. Doesn't even need to. Andy was watching that angle like a hawk. And is he going to be able to take down Tyler S for another round for the Saints? Yep. That is definitely something that the op does specialize at is removing somebody's skull. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just spontaneously. You're there, and then all of a sudden you're, well, not there. Um, but yeah, economy definitely going on to the side of St. Clair here. They're keeping their AWP, they're keeping most of their M4s. They have the advantage in terms of weaponry. Um, but yeah, Fanshawe here, gonna start pulling out. They just came out of their economy. So now they're gonna run standard uh, AKs with a good amount of utility here. Already tossing most of that out, trying to get those positions smoked, mollied, and flashed and uh, pushing very slowly. And like I said, the slowness is by choice. I feel like they're not feeling forced to go slow. They're doing it because they know they want to do anything. Like, you know, 
smoke. Another one at no scope this time. Like I said, an absolute beast with this gun. Gonna stop that mid push, or at least delay it significantly. Now Petro, I believe, inside of Crow's Nest. Andy is gonna hop on the bench. <laughs> That's gonna be the wrong move to make. An op is gonna go in the hands of Cheese now. Frag grenade can go out, slow him down, do a little bit of damage to Tyler S as well. They're gonna be retreating through underpass. They're gonna try to make the rotation through apartments instead. Yeah, the op here exchanging hands is definitely not something you want to see. Yeah, there. But Tyler S was just ready for him. <laughs> yeah, no, and uh, now it's a 2v3, so how could this possibly play out? It really can go one way or the other. Anybody's game, JBH now evening things up on the site and he sees the gun barrel of the op but don't let that distract you there's still another member to go through here's the plan he's gonna find Ooh. the next two guys he's Asians. clean with it of a monk able to make it worthwhile coming around the corner and taking up double kill to end the round and he picks up the op yeah. we gotta More make sure that thing stays in the right hands of course <laughs> the right hands meaning andy's They're gonna immediately toss it over to him <laughs> well played by them yeah i mean hey when you know who your opera is and you know that your opera is better than me uh so pretty much anybody except me uh yeah it's <laughs> it's definitely nice to have that op on your team covering those long angles uh even those close angles. like the op is just versatile right it's a one-shot yeah. kill so you can use it at close range and it's not the it's end of the shotgun world. When you're, yeah. when you're really close, then yeah, it's kind of like a there's shotgun. There's no spread, but yeah, it's a shotgun. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of spread. Or at least, like, there's one bullet, but that bullet has an insane spread. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I'm assuming you're going to ADS with the op and not just hit fire it. No, if you're close enough, you don't have to aim. You can literally just be in front of them and shoot and get the kill. Um, that's what happened in the connector moment there. He didn't aim down sights. He just shot. He just shot? shot? Yeah. Oh. Um, they have a nice nice. little no-scope indicator in the kill feed now. Shout out to Valve for it. Tyler are stabbing a teammate. That was, uh, hopefully that was intentional. Otherwise, it might be a unfortunate accident there. He just Hunter stabbed his teammate. Yeah, you can hear the knife sound effect. Also, it said he attacked a teammate, but they're all going to come into the pass. Frag grenade is going to go out. The Molly as well. They're going to put their sports. Oh in. my! Halt! Uh. And Miggy going to be mowing them down. The Saints reacted to that instantaneously, recognized what they were going for, and stopped it immediately. Again, it's. it's these the things about Counter Strike that are so impressive are often then highlighted are things like you know flick off shots and sick headshots. But moments like that, I really appreciate where the nade utility, the recognition, the rotations from all the players on Saints just instantaneously, and it went out in favor. JBH playing it slow and pays off. Finds the arm peeking out from behind the bricks. He's gonna get the one shot kill onto the last member of Fanshaw Fuel. Yeah, no, St. Clair Saints here, really dominant. They kind of got taken back. Uh, they were 3-1, to one, and then now they're 6-3. to three. So they haven't let Fanshawe win a single round in the past five rounds, which is not <laughs> ideal for them. This this is a, definitely a blow on the morale when it comes to Fanshawe College here. Uh, but they got to watch out, too, because you're... Kind of, oh, hold on here. There's another drop in the game. Fanshawe just purchased their own off. This one's done being passed around. Now we got two in circulation. Yep. The op economy is booming. Now it's only a matter of time before we see who's going to come out on top here. Fanshawe feel hungry for their own round. But again, they're going to be playing slowly. The Saints have one on every major angle and two on B at least. So they're going to be able to catch out any rotations and sniff out any, you know, foul or tent. And he's going to find the kill onto Cheese trying to make the rotation through the palace, I believe he was, or somewhere mid. But he's going to get that. And that's going to be Fanshawe now playing a little bit hard. Recognize the threat. JBH is going to swing around, find the defined one on top of those bricks. Pushing up slowly now. Saints, or Fanshawe, feel rather. They're going to have to reconsider whether or not they still want to go for A or try to get the rotation through B. They have one of theirs. Tyler S is going to be emerging from underpass. He's not going to be able to find. Oh, now he does. Ooh. Andy, but they both saw each other <laughs> from that crow's nest. He's in mid, slowly making sure he's watching Catwalk. And now he's going to get the nerve to go up through connector while his team is on the other side, pushing up ramp. Pushing out, Petro is going to find Tyler S on connector, and JBH is going to find Jacob on top of those boxes. Oh, he's shooting to the floor there, but with a beautiful shot, just a blind wow. shot through the floor, JBH is going to get 
dinked in the head. Bomb is in between those two corners, so even if he was able to push out there, it would be really hard for him to make anything happen. Those things are going to take another round. Yeah, make that six rounds where they have been absolutely stomping. And uh, is that op? Yeah, that op is gone now. It doesn't exist anymore. So back to one op in circulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest is going to be, I believe, all M4s, although we do seem to have uh, somebody going for an eco. I'm not sure if that's... Yeah, he just bought... An, um, oh, no, he bought a Mac. My bad. Yeah, he bought a Mac 10. The Saints are... Uh, the Fanshaw, they're, they're really feeling the pain of the ball right now. Uh, they don't have a lot of money to work with. A couple of them, two of them, rather, Tyler, is going to be picking up a game of personal they really are not in a good position right now. All being yeah, forced to walk no. slowly through the fire. So low HP. <laughs> oh my. Feel yeah, like they got. They, they were medium well done. Right oh, there. he switched this off just as he walked by. And he's going to go down for it. The worst Yikes. possible timing he could have experienced. Instead of clicking left click, he switched his gun. If only the key bindings were switched there. Petro is going to find one head. Now he finds the body of another. And even though that was such poor timing on the op shot, the Saints are still going to walk away with the round. Just dominating. Fanshawe feels so far on punish. Wait, is this op going to disappear? No, one of them picked it up. Oh, okay, they picked it up. Oh, he's got that 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 uh, van hop down a little bit there. That was, that was impressive. Unless I'm delusional, I think he got it. I'm not sure. In any case, he went for it. I like that. Now, Fanshawe, they, again, actually uh, are going to have some money to work with here. One of them enough to buy an op. That loss bonus is really doing work for them. Everyone's going to be fully decked out here. Nades, an op, and everyone else holding AKs. But once again, it's just a matter of how to utilize them. They're going to be going for a mid push. No, actually, they haven't showed their hand just yet. They went slow in. They're using nades. They're flashing. They're faking. But they're picking up Tyler. Had the opportunity to get that kill there. Frag grenade trading. Both of them are doing the exact same things for each other. Jacob is going to find the to try now. Molly almost actually threatening Tyler's life. Really scary stuff. Now the Saints are recognizing. Oh, the pacing. Andy's going to push up onto Tyler. Going to take him down. Not without not having an op this time around. Still demonstrating he's a force. Uh, rifle. Try to push through the mid cart. See if they can find him, but Andy, such a strong marksman, is going to find the head of the Defiant one, and he's still holding the sight strong. It's not really a sight, but can definitely feel like one sometimes. Nyland is going to wow. swing onto JBH with the beautiful headshots, like just he was there, and he's still holding mid, top of mid. But A is going to get cleared up for Fanshawe, and they're finally going to find a plant after so long. Yeah, those shots are so clean on the side of St. Clair. Uh, you don't even, like, they don't even get a shot off before they die. They just yeah. spontaneously die. <laughs> That's what bullets can do. Uh, throwing out the frag, that might be enough to kill. He's forced to run out into the open there or die to the frag grenade. So really not a good option for him in any circumstance. They are going to be hiding behind ticket booths. It's just two saints left, but two of our most deadly ones, if you ask me. Nylander, using them all best of his ability to so find the target frag gonna be clearing up the smoke putting in clear sight and they're gonna get one round that's gonna be the last round of this half gonna be switching over now the Saints are gonna be on T side gonna end up with four to eight Fanshawe with half the score of the Saints they were really strong to start things off but the Saints found their footing and they're now walking all over Fanshawe yeah, so Saints found their footing, walk over Fanshawe, and now, I mean, Fanshawe did get one round on them, so they broke the streak of the, their loss streak, mm -hmm. but it's still 4-8. to eight. I mean, St. Clair is doubling their rounds right now, so they need to get a big come up and get on a win streak really quickly, because if they don't, they're going to end up losing here. And that's definitely winning the pistol round is a lot in your favor there, but the Saints aren't going to make it easy. They're already gone. Trouble pushing up through catwalk now. They're gonna do a split push onto B. They have two in apartments, two coming up through catwalk, but it's not gonna matter. She's gonna have Fanshawe Field Squad ready to defend it. She's gonna find Weston, she's gonna find Tyler S. Now she's gonna take down Petro, pushing out through Market potentially. She's gonna hesitate. The Saints have taken hold of the point. They didn't get the plant actually. The bomb is just down on site, so you're gonna have to make a sacrifice and expose yourself to make sure you can get it. They do pick it up, they go for the plant now, and now the pressure's on for Fanshawe. It's three, three, all pistols only, but. 
It's anybody's game. Oh, come here behind on Catwalk. Jeez, what a beautiful headshot with the USP. This shows how accurate that gun can keep. It's a 1v1 for the pistol round now. Oh, oh so close fighting the head through the bunch, oh. but he finds it. Jacob is going to take the round, and now the Saints are going to be playing off of a lost pistol round. Fanshawe, two in a row now, really taking the momentum back from the Saints. Yeah, that's kind of one of those moments that you have where you, you need to defend the bomb, but you're the only one alive in your team. And it's kind of a decision of do I hide and wait for them to uh, then start defusing the bomb and then I go on them? Mm -hmm. Or do I just play for time or do I just take the duel? And here they decided to take the duel and the duel didn't go their way, which sucks. Um, but yeah, I mean, playing around those bombs, like you, you can hear when someone starts defusing, correct? Yeah, for sure. You can so, hear it beeps pretty loud. <laughs> yeah, playing for time. I mean, he did have a lot of time that he had to play around, which is a pain. Uh, when you're playing around bomb, you want that thing to have like 10 seconds left when you start playing around it. Because if you don't, then they have chances to go for flanks and stuff like that. And it just makes your life a living hell. So yeah, taking the duel here was an interesting decision. But ooh, kills starting to pop up. Right, one. Going down the pressure from the Saints as they did not check ladder. They're going to feel it for that mistake. Saints not able to pull off the same feat that Fanshawe did in the previous half where they won the pistol round, or they won after they lost the pistol round. The Saints are going to lose after the pistol round instead. And now they're going to be getting a bit of the loss bonus and they're going to be able to just buy up some Deagles, 5.7s, Tech 9s, and just see if they can get any pickoffs to hurt the economy of Fanshawe heading to this next round. I think they're definitely going to be playing the picks here. You can kind of tell how they're moving so fast and especially they want to see if they can find marksmen but they don't have any snipers on the side of Fanshawe nobody really holding mid and that might be a mistake on the side of Fanshawe they're going to be trading one now but JBH is going to find Tyler Jacob is going to be finding JBH and instead Saints are down to just two but the bomb is close to B side running through with the MP9 is going to find Jacob going to find the bomb next go for the plant slowly though oh he sees him through there he's gonna go for the plant anyways he knows he's there but he knows he's not gonna push it he's gonna be watching both windows finds the headshot so cleanly almost finds the second one he's gonna take out the mp9 no now he knows exactly where he is he's even gonna no okay i was gonna say he wants to he feels confident with the deagle but he's gonna switch over he did so much damage he's just a sneeze away from dying behind the wall now he gotta play for time. Play carefully, and he finds it with three HP left. Mickey steals the round from Banshaw with four kills in the most important moment of that round. He snatches it away, and now the Saints are looking at a huge economic boon from that. Even Andy being able to afford an op and afford it, he will now. They're not going to have a lot of money left after this, except for Miggy, who did survive that round. So they're kind of putting everything into this next round, but Fanshawe forced to do the same. This is a little bit of an economic reset. So whoever wins this one will be likely to win the next. Yeah, stones are definitely moving here uh, on the side of St. Clair. Uh, their opponent, Fanshawe, here, not as wealthy, but the op does come out. I believe that is an op. That's a scout. So oh, if that was an op, he would be dead, but it doesn't matter. He has to get the shot twice instead of just once. Miggy being the richest member of the Saints, he is a little bit more expendable, uh, so I feel like they, th I mean, that might actually just be the logic matter. He has the most money, so if he dies, it's not going to hurt as much. They got a lot of valuable information. They know that the sniper on the side of Fanshawe is a scout, not an op. That allows you to play a little bit more flexibly. Uh, you don't have to be as scared to peek through these noticeably sniper favored angles, but they're still going to play conservatively. They have that information, but it's not enough to make a play off of it. They are going to be slowly creeping through B, leaving two behind, but they are going to be committing for the apartment's push. They still could rotate through underpass if things get hairy, and they do know that mid is open, and even if it wasn't open, they only got a scout watching it. They're going to be throwing out the smoke. The same thing are not going to react, or JBH is going to react slowly. Through. Flash is going to get committed, and now the battle is on. He's going to find two Saints, now three on the side of Tyler S, getting that last kill onto Rai. But they see him through the truck, the op, with and getting a headshot. You don't need to do that with the op, but he did it anyway. But still, that scout that I 
kind of underestimated the value of in this round coming and clutch is going to be the last gun to get them that kill to end the round seven to nine now it is getting a lot closer to saints maybe not as comfortable on the t side on mirage as they are on the ct side which i definitely empathize with it feels Damn near impossible sometimes to play T-side on Mirage, if you're asking me. At least since I don't have the coordination that these states have, pushing B can feel like an impossible task. But even at their level, it seems it's a little bit of a Hail Mary, just hoping that you're not going to get mowed down by someone on truck. But now, we're going to be opting for a little bit more of a flexible rotation. They have two on mid, leaving the bomb behind so they don't get stuck anywhere. And it seems that Vanchel's going to be trying to meet their moment. Yeah, here we can see the scout actually got swapped out. There's no scout uh, on any sides, no snipers actually uh, anywhere. There are some few SMGs that are coming out here. As Ooh, the spray tracking, so well used. Oh, jeez. Nylander is going to take down two uh, with the help of Jacob finishing off. It's just two Saints left now. One, Rai goes down. It's only going to be JBH left. He's under underpass with the Deagle. Seeing if he can find the head of anybody on catwalk now on connector. He hears the footsteps, I believe, of Nylander, but it's not gonna be too mad. It's not gonna be too impactful for him. He's still gonna have to play conservatively, play safe. The bomb is out of play right now. Basically, he's just gonna be playing to pick. He's not gonna find any chance. He's gonna find him on top. Now we're eight to nine for Vansha. Yeah, we can tell that uh, this map is a little bit more one-sided uh, than uh, you would wish. And that's kind of why St. Clair was ahead. And now Fangshot kind of catching up to St. Clair saying, all right, we can play this game too when we have the, the favorite side. And uh, yeah, I mean, now eight to nine. Uh, it's still in favor of St. Clair, but it's getting pretty darn close. What are, what are your thoughts in terms of who's gonna make it back? Uh, I definitely feel like just looking at the way the economy is right now, both teams are in a relatively similar situation. Um, Saints, if you're assuming everyone's gonna die at the end of this round, which is unlikely, it's gonna be on whoever gets the most picks, but they're pushing through apartment frankly is gonna go out. Not gonna find the kill, Petro Tyler has to kill the MP9 so deadly. Wall almost finds another, but they're rushing around to bring around the Rosie pocket full of bullets. They take him down. Now in the market, she's with the offs gonna take down Andy. Just two Saints left, making the rotation. Trying to get the plant, and they find it. JBH. The Molly is going to take the life thanks to Cheese as well with the op, and that's going to be the round for Fanshawe. Nine to nine. Things are looking scary if you're a Saints fan. Things are looking really good if you're a Fanshawe. Yeah, Fanshawe here coming back, but there is, I mean, there's a comeback angle for both sides. Fanshawe is in their comeback arc right now. And if Saints wants to win, they need to start their comeback arc. Because, uh, yeah, looking at the economy here, uh, we're seeing the op come out once again for the site of St. Clair. Uh, of course, they are, the site of Fanshawe already had their op, uh, so they're keeping that. So two ops in the economy right now. Mm. Um, but in terms of money, I think St. Clair's struggling a little teeny bit more. Uh, I'd say a little bit more than that. But now things are even, at least in the scoreline. The Saints might be feeling that pressure. That pressure might be what allows them to kind of come back from the brink. So much smoke over in mid. Jesus is going to be able to find the pick off onto Rai. Not even sure where he was for that one, but the smoke is going to come out on Cat as well. Watching that angle. And the smoke is in the apartment. It's going to get cleared up by the smoke, but Tyler ready for them, taking out two, both approaching from different angles. He was ready for them regardless. He sees Andy, kind of walks through the smoke, throws up a frag, scare him off. It's not going to affect him though. He's just going to be holding his angle down now, but he, what he doesn't know is Tyler is coming from behind, it seems. Maybe now he does. He's turned around. The smoke is going to go up. They can hear him look through his scope. So they know he's there. He gets the body shot through. The wall is not going to be able to kill, even though the op can kill in one shot. The wall is going to reduce the damage it does. On top of the truck, as soon as that smoke dissipates, Andy's in trouble. But he's now facing the right way. But the frag might be enough to kill him. No, he's still standing there. So resilient. He just wants to find any picks he can get. But Tyler, being the brave soldier that he is, he's going to get on that truck. And he's going to take down the gunman with the op. And now, Banshaw winning a huge streak. The Saints are now the ones playing from the back foot. 10 to 9. But they have a huge loss bonus on their back. It's going to at least allow them to afford AKs on everybody. 
and they're just gonna have to play scrappily to see if they can try to find any openings in the defensive line of Fanshawe and exploit for the disabilities. Yeah, Fanshawe here with two ops. I don't know, is two ops like a good idea? Like I know having yes. one op is good. Absolutely. Yes? Especially on this map. Well, the only really the way I'm looking at it is through this map. Because you got one for mid and you have one for apartments. At least that's the way I see it. Watching apartments with an op is a very comfortable thing. It's literally just a straight line in mid. That's what it's for. The op is. Tyler's gonna be able to find that kill with that op onto JBH. And now Andy taking a bit of damage man. Slowly trying to find his way up on the the mollies. All these utils inside of Fanshawe are doing such good work at deterring the Saints' push. They're going to be sitting in underpass, or a uh, ramp rather, to push up. And he gets brave, pushes up through connector. 13 HP left on him. They're going to swing. The flash is going to make it scary. The cheese is going to go down. They find one under ladder. Petro and Rai are going to get that kill together. Now, ooh, but Tyler finds the off shot to take down Andy. Flashing out, going on the corner. He's got two kills to his name. Saints get the plant. Saints get the plant. But Jacob not ready for Miggy to swing around that corner. It's just the lone warrior, Tyler, a force to be reckoned with. He's found his comfort zone. He's locked in, and he wants to show a fan shot is made of. But no, he's not going to get the chance. The Saints are there to put him down. Petro catches him walking through. He's just looking at the op. He knows he wants it. Just toying with it now. 10 to 10. This game's close, and it is tied. We're so close to the end. Both teams just need three more rounds to win. Will we be going to an overtime? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, a lot of opportunities here for the Ops, and they are finding them. But one of the most important parts, I think, is uh, that both the Ops are now on both sides. For sure. And when that happens, you get the Op duels. Maybe. Uh, it depends on where they're going to send the Op from both sides. I never know what to do with an opper on T, but Andy, he's a beast with it. They know that they can just throw him anywhere. He's gonna be finding picks, but it is gonna be an op duel that both offers are gonna be watching over on the A side. Uh, they're gonna go for the push. Either, yeah, I think they're gonna be committing for A because they went to go pick up the bomb. Uh, kind of dilly-dallying a little bit, but they have Petro sitting in Palace, but it's only a matter of time before a confrontation occurs through ramp. He has the MAC-10, so he's got the perfect gun for a swing. He just has to get comfortable and go for it. Waiting for the moment here. He's getting a little scared. The flash is going to come out. And that's going to give Defiant One the opportunity to stay alive. Petro on top of the palace. He finds the head and finds one kill. Saints all getting kills at different points of the map. All together there, Cheese is going to find Andy taking him down. That's going to be the optimal over <laughs> for the side of Fanshawe taking that one. Only one pop standing on this map. The bomb is down, but it's not planted over on A side. The Saints are going to have to find their way over. They want to keep JBH alive, or rather Petro, who I believe is the one in Palace, because he's the best way of getting it. But we don't even need to worry about that, because Biggie's going to get the final two kills to end up the round. It's 10 to 11. This game is so scary and nerve-wracking, but it seems that the Saints are trying to claw their way back. Yeah, Saints clawing their way back. They're kind of, they're getting in the groove of the side that they were in, right? When they were playing the favored side, it was like, yeah, okay, this is easy. We can play this. Now they're on the unfavored side, and it's kind of like, okay, you know what? This is, we need some time to get used to this. Now they're used to it. Now they can kind of try and go for the comeback angle. But again, you're not on the favored side here, so you have to play this clean, and you have to make sure that you win it. And we're seeing here, Fanshawe actually going for an eco round. They have no choice, they have no money, they're poor. They they have USPs and they want to make sure that if they lose this round, they still have money for the next because that's the round that they're scared of. If they, if they spent money this round buying crappy guns like the FAMAS and then you lose this round, then you're forced to work with the FAMAS or worse on the next one. So they're just going to stick with the default guns, maybe buy a Diggle if you fancy like the fine ones because you could get a clean headshot there if Andy decides to go through that window. But if Spidey Sense is tingled in the perfect way to let him know not to go for it, so they find the plant and Fanshawe just waiting for this next and potentially final Ooh. round. The Deagle's going to find one at least. Almost finds two, but Rai's going to put him down for him to do more damage with that gun. Now Fanshawe working with a range from about 6 to 4k dollars. They have to make that much money work. They're going to get one op and the rest are going to be rifles to make sure that they can hold down the site. If they lose this round, they lose the entire 
entire game so they have to make sure they're playing perfect they're putting every dollar they have into this one because even if they lose their lives in this one they have to make sure they're putting everything they have into it there's no point in saving if this is the last round so they're gonna go for it that's the right choice if you're asking me and i'm not sure if this map is objectively ct sided it just definitely feels ct sided for me when i'm playing it. i think it's just bad but what both teams have demonstrated is that it's definitely possible to make anything happen uh, in this map. But in this potentially last round, we find Miggy pouring out, almost gonna go down in the struggle. It's a 3v3 on market now. They're gonna be on B side. It's a little scary, but the rotation that the Saints are making, it's almost now. Oh, but they find JBH, but Miggy finds a swing, taking down Jacob. Running through market now. Tyler, no, that's not Tyler, that's Jesus. Oh, can he find it sitting in the smoke cloud like a ninja, a smoke bomb? Any opportunity to disappear, he might take it, but he finds Andy, oh. taking him down, just denying that plant, and it's just Miggy with an AK. They're holding down the fort. They know exactly where he is, and they take him down. Fanshaw is holding on to this round for dear life. 11 to 12, can they take us to an overtime? I mean, that alt was clean. That's all I have to say. Headshot after headshot incredible aim there i would have whiffed like three out of four of my shots maybe if you're on the side of fanshaw right now <laughs> this is where this is where all of your team bonding exercises this is where all of your camaraderie becomes important because if you lose this round it is soul crushing when you win even if you end up losing the game you will feel like you're untouchable gods of the game and of esports so honestly i kind of cheer for fan shot here because it will make this first game so damn exciting if they manage to take it ultimately i hope the saints still do after we head to overtime but hopefully fan shot can find it within themselves to muster together the courage to hold on now coming up the ramp and the 77 HP after taking a little bit of the need. If you can find anything here, that would be a huge opening for the Saints, but Tyler actually finds a kill onto JBH, and now Miggy is down as well. Things are looking pretty good for them, but Andy in a very sneaky oh, spot, but he yeah. finds a headshot, but he doesn't know this one's behind him. There's one on Palace, and he takes him down. He didn't check behind him before he started swinging over the connector. Now, with the headshot, not rather with the op shot, Rai is going to go down from Cheese on Ticket. It's just one Saint left, Petro, and he doesn't have a lot of HP. He knows where the opera is. I think there's only one logical deduction as to where he probably would be, but... 1v4 angle? Maybe? He just has to hold the stairs. If he moves, he, he now he has information. He knows exactly where he is. And he has an idea of where he's been. He won that. That would have been so good. It's 12 to 12. We're going to overtime in game one. Saints versus Fanshawe Fuel. I couldn't have asked for a better gift myself. And while we are a little bit caught up in the intensity of that last round there, or last two now, but uh, Omega Strikers, I believe, has gotten started, yep. so if you want to check out the action there, you can head over to Shiro Isu's stream, or you can type exclamation mark streams in the chat to get a link to all the other streams that we're going to have going on tonight. Even though it feels like the main event, we still have a lot of other games going on tonight once they get started, but here we're getting started with overtime on Rush. Yeah, here. Oh man, as a lot of uh, shooting does come out at first, a one for one, uh, neither sided really. Although I do think that an opera goes down. Uh, but yeah, only op in play right now is on the side of Fanshawe, and it is. Uh, they're holding their angles for sure as they throw their util out, just holding down those areas, not letting Sinclair push up here. How are they gonna play this? I think the way they're going to play is just put faith into Miggy because he seems to be getting all these clutch last plays for them so far. But the Saints, they have to decide an angle of attack. They only have a minute left. Seems that they're going to be favoring B side here, which I agree with because who expects the B push after such a huge delay? Not me. And I don't think Fanshawe either because they're actually rotating one away. Yeah, he's rotating over to A. Nope. Nah. He's, yeah, he's going for A now. 
gonna be hovering in the area at least just watching that little gap between mid and B side so Saint is gonna be walking through Crow's Nest and if he walks through that spot he actually might go down to the member of Fanshawe watching it but no Rai actually finds that kill there and that's gonna be at the same time the Saints are gonna be pushing out through apartments and they find their way onto the point just one member of Fanshawe left and he's holding an op in a very awful situation that's gonna allow the Saints to find that headshot on him they the plant as well just for the hell of it and we're gonna be going to this next round we're also getting started underway with Call of Duty, our academy team is going to be playing uh, against ECPI University, and they're going to be on hard point. First team to 250 wins. Like I said, if you want to follow any of this action, you can go ahead and type exclamation mark streams in the chat while we're still watching this Counter Strike action. Fanshawe Field versus St. Clair Saints Academy. They're going to be trying to get their push started. I believe they switch sides. Yes, that's what you do on overtime, of course. Switch sides. Saints are now on team. Side and they're gonna be trying to push. Actually, no, they're still on T side. They didn't switch. My mistake. Yeah, they uh, they do seem a little bit comfortable on this side here. But with the side swapping, it's gonna be a little hard to get into the groove of things, right? When you're staying on one side, you're getting into the habit of playing that side. I believe they're gonna be swapping after yeah. this round. And once they start swapping, that's when it's going to start. I never see scarier. overtime, so the rules of overtime always eludes me. I usually just lose my games pretty <laughs> quick and smart. So, overtime, a little bit of an enigma for me, but we're going to figure this one out together as the Saints are trying to figure out their angle of attack. Watching, this is such a good angle to hold. It gives you so much information. They see that nobody's rotating through A side, and they're also getting information on B side. They're still able to hear anybody walking around, as well as react quickly to any adaptations that Fanshawe makes. But they're going to commit over to B side. Going to swing over onto Market. No one's watching. One is on the bench. Jacob down, but Tyler finds Petro trailing behind Rai from the rotation. Going to come around to the second door here. In fact, he's just gonna up the plant. <laughs> kind of funny there how that wall kind of seemingly still here. But of course, as I said, Mickey gonna find the point. One. A lot of them are sitting in market, switching out his gun. Mickey just barely survives, but fine! Oh. Taking out the pistol, making the right play. Mickey is gonna find cheese as he tries to get the swing to get the final few shots on him. Take him down. It's just Nylander left, and he's sitting in market. He is between a rock and a hard place with nowhere to go, but he still finds Miggy, the last bullet he needed to put him down. Rai is there right in front of him, but also Andy with the off on Van. There was nothing he really could have done there. Even if he killed either of them, the other one would have just taken him down and the action will not be stopped anytime soon as we're underway with all of our titles tonight. League of Legends draft is going, Omega Strikers action is brewing, and Call of Duty, Call of Duty action is Call of Dutying. But once again, if you want to watch any of these streams, go ahead and hit exclamation mark streams in the chat, type that out, and you'll get a nice command, which will spit all of the links right at you. But this last, potentially last round for the Saints, I believe, for this overtime cheese, is gonna find Miggy walking up on mid flash, gonna come out just to make that a little bit more nerve wracking. Nobody really watching mid on Fanshawe Field. The Saints haven't picked up on that yet. They're still playing safe, playing it cool, calm, and collected. Flash is gonna come out on Parmas, gonna give the opportunity for Tyler to peek out, but you're not gonna peek out against JBH, my friend. Not with your life intact. Is he gonna get the headshot in retaliation? It's almost like he knows since that flash is coming out, someone's gotta be swinging me. And he just took that shot and took it like a champ. Spidey right. senses. Spidey senses, indeed. <laughs> more like game knowledge senses which I don't have right now. Trying to get the smoke off. Make it a little bit harder for fan shots to pin down their exact location. He's going to even wall make a little bit. Petro is going to find a fight when Nylander is going to get revenge. Frag on top of connector stairs. It's going to find Rai. Love how these fragments have like a 100% in his damage rate so far in this match. He's going to go for the plant. He's going to just make it a little scary for him, but he's going to get him through. Nylander finds Rai JBH as well. But with the op, with the box, he's gonna do a lot of damage, but it's not enough. You have to get the kill, my friend. And that's gonna be Fanshawe finding a return round, getting the defuse. They're still in this, they still don't like it, they're still kicking, showing what they're made of here. Yep, and two ops on the side of Fanshawe. It's gonna make things a lot harder for St. Clair College, but well, here, you switch sides, sides now, so, so it's so, gone yeah. now. Uh, <laughs> I thought there was going to be some economy stuff, but no, there isn't. Not in this case. Uh, unless that op translates into money, but I don't think it does. 
So yeah, yeah we're looking at the uh, amount of money, and then I believe that just carries through for the next rounds until this switch occurs. And the switch has just occurred, so they're gonna get the reset. Everyone's starting with, I believe, t uh, twelve fifty, twelve hundred fifty, or twelve thousand fifty. I'm not sure exactly. Enough to get an op and some makers. Yeah, for sure. So they're gonna have to make that money last through these rounds here. But the Saints, with the advantage of momentum carrying them through, Flash is gonna go out and the Saints are just gonna be holding down the key side. That's where Fanch is gonna be pouring out through locations. Have to come out now. They have to come out efficiently. JBH, or Miggy rather, being pushed down and held behind that wall, but he pushes out with his own gun. Find the wall bang. A lot of damage onto Cheese inside of apartments, and he's so low, yet he's still alive. Petro even walking through the smoke is with he his knife. knife. He wants it. He almost had it, in fact, but Cheese showing oh. his hand, and he gets a lot of damage onto Petro, onto Petro, but not enough to kill. He's gonna get the return. Now Saints one round away from victory, I believe, if that dramatic sound effect isn't lying to me. Uh, so they still have to really keep things together, or they risk another overtime. And Fanshawe still is in this. They show that they still have signs of life, even just for winning the previous round, or round previous to previous. The action is intense, ladies and gentlemen. It's hard to keep track, but we're gonna do our best to fall in here, looking to push through mid now. Flash has come out, Tyler's completely blind, and he's still persisting. They're trading, they're trading you till smokes. Haven mid is completely unseeable, unrecognizable. The quiet one is gonna rotate along with the rest of Fanshawe. And they were able to find two Saints. Well, well, now Saints are able to find a return kill with the optics. So Andy holding B side is gonna be watching. As well as behind the man. And he finds the kill on the cheese as he hops over the man. He knew exactly where he was, but almost finds the member of Fanshawe walking Tyler and the defiant one fighting two headshots as they make their way out. Just one state left, but that one state almost won that round. But he's gonna get put down by the defiant one. Now we're getting close to another potential overtime. Saints, I believe, just need to win this next round. Otherwise, we might have to reset the overtime once again so much going through your minds if you're on any of these teams, but they have to hold it together and make sure that they still play optimally to make sure that they can win this round. Yeah, after one overtime, you're starting to get, <laughs> it's starting to get old, uh, when, at least when you're the players. We, we enjoy it, but I, uh, yeah. Flash coming out, Molly wants to get the Molly off the connector. Oh no! no. <laughs> Jacob That's body blocked him. They just Molly their own exit out of into mid. Now, Honestly, I'm not sure if going mid would have been in their favor because Saints kind of have it on lock. They're going to rotate over to B instead. A little bit of a happy accident, potentially. I believe they have uh, Andy holding down Van, watching down apartments, and Mickey on catwalk. Where do you want to be? No, actually, it's Rai with the M4 there instead. I guess Mickey's or um, Andy's might be mid then with the op. Gonna have to see where he is. Petro is under ladder. Again, Saints are holding on to such key and vital positions. Dantra actually opting to rotate to A. I think this might be the play because they've been favoring B a lot recently. The Saints might not be expecting this rotation. Yeah, definitely those rotations being a little bit more sneaky. This round is really slow. Like, you can feel the tension on both sides. Everybody knows that there's a threat imminent in this fight, and they don't want to give their players away here. We're seeing the utility come out a little bit more now. Things are picking up. And sure. Ooh. And that Andy's going to take down Tyler as he makes his exit through ramp. Now, pushing up on. But no! He almost found that shot. I didn't even know it was possible. How he's still alive? He shot him with an up. What? He's still alive and well. Andy now is gonna find another kill onto Jacob. He sees him getting on top of the box. They hear the plant go down. The Saints are gonna get aggressive, but they're not gonna be able to stop the plant. It's gonna go through. Andy made jungle, but he's gonna get swung. Nylon is gonna be able to take him down. Nylon finding another one. JBH is gonna take down Nylander, and that's gonna be the round. I didn't even realize he was the last one for Fanshaw. The Saints are gonna be able to take this and take game one on Mirage. Very excellently played by them. So intense down to the last moment. We almost went to a second overtime. Fanshawe, an absolute wow. 
beast of a team pushing our Saints to the brink in this first game. And again, ladies and gentlemen, that's just game one. But we're heading over now to Omega Strike as well. Game two of Counter-Strike gets underway. I'm going to have to do a lot of mental just uh, reconsidering of how that game went down because it was a beauty to watch. And I can't wait to see how Fanshawe treats us in these next couple of games or next game or a couple of games if the Saints end up losing the next one. Yeah, here on the side of Omega Strikers, uh, it's kind of equal. I mean, or equal. I'll say close. It's one to zero, not on the side of Saints, which is kind of a change for what they're used to. They're usually used to just being completely in the lead here. Uh, but yeah, one barrier down. Ooh, core Ooh, already a core flip. Going to be taken into effect. Going to get or save their little pylon there. Beautiful by Bailable. Coach Bailable playing now for the team, stepping up and acting as a player. Shiro, Shiro is going to be holding down mid on their legendary... Uh, I forgot her name. This is my favorite character in this game. Yeah, the slime. The slime. Uh, Damn, I'm going to have to remember that one. But bouncing ooh. over now. The gate is open. Shiro stands guard with Emperor on the app. I'm not going to get the action as Emerald goes down. Both gates are open. It's a 3v2 until Emerald respawns. But Shiro holding mid, jumping forward. Bailable is going to be there, but they almost get pushed out. Shiro, oh my Whoa, god, Bailable with save. the save of his career. The mid is going to explode. Black hole. Amy with the turret. Going to be a pest for the Saints to handle, but it's zero. No! Ah, so close. They're going to get the goal. But now they're tied up here. Saints are actually, okay, misread the scores there. So this is Saints. They have zero points in this round, but they have two total rounds uh, under their belt. Whereas their opponents here, they only have one round, but they have two points in this round. So uh, Saints, if they can pull back 3-0, then they will win actually this first game. But whether or not they're gonna be able to pull it up is yes. Oh wow, already two now. Because Shiro already in the base with the ultimate getting committed. All those slimes are going to go down. And it's going to be a burden to handle. Available is going to be able to turn on that before. Pushing it up now. And right in the middle. But they're just going to be able to stop that now. Shiro has to act as the temporary goalie while Available is recouping and recovering. Emperor is going to be there to join them. Teaming up now to make sure that they can wait for their loving coach and goalie. He's respawned now. Emperor is going to take the black hole explosion. Hero in the front now with the slime. Try to work it together to get the. No! Emperor! You can see the frustration with the Evo. was so close to stuffing the core available. Oh. Just a couple of steps behind. That's going to allow them to take this first. Or their second round round against the Saints, tying up this first game. Yeah, I think the projectiles there were a little bit on cooldown, and that's why the goal went in. Unlucky. But it is what it is, it happens. On the side of League of Legends, now that the game's actually started though, uh, things are looking good. Let's see at what we have in terms of team compositions. Uh, WSU here seems to have a Cassante, a Rek'Sai in the jungle, a Swain in the mid lane. Uh, I think that's an Ezreal Karma bot lane too. As Oh, speaking Ooh. of the mid lane here, first blood going off to the Swain. Uh, in the top lane on the side of St. Clair, we have... What? I think that was a LeBlanc, you know? LeBlanc? I think that's a Swain. That's LeBlanc. No, that's Swain. Unless they reworked uh, Swain to be a pretty lady. I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out sooner. <laughs> sooner rather than later, I hope. Um, what's going on in that League of Legends game. I can't wait, because one of us is gonna be really surprised yeah. when we go back. I'm pretty sure that's Swain, because it looked blonde. Let's bet on it. Let's, let's bet on okay, it. Okay, all right. All bet, right, bet, bet. let's do it. But <laughs> what might be worth betting on more is the outcome of this next crucial round for both of these Omega Strikers teams. First to three will take this first game, and looks like the Saints are already slipping up a little bit here. The first goal going to go the way of the opponents. Yeah, no, Saints not used to being stuck like this. Usually they're all the ones being in the lead and always winning, but here they're on the they're on the off uh, on the defense here. They don't know what is going on, and yeah, I mean, when you're not in a familiar situation, you you make mistakes. And here, I mean, this is probably what's going. Oh, hold on here, Shiro pushing up and getting that core to move around a lot more. 
an impenetrable defense on the side of the Saints thanks to available with the legendary Kai. Now slime hopping, Emberred pushing up really aggressively. The Saints are losing a little bit of their midfield control. Core flips gonna have to get committed and Emberred is gonna oh, break it clean. out, pushing through the bottom. Now we're tied 1-1, very well coordinated by the side of the Saints. Yeah, no, I think this is the fourth goal Sorry. on the side of the Saints. Oh no, well, they've won two previous rounds. Oh yeah. Right, so this is their seventh oh, goal at minimum. Uh, but now Shiro pushing up, getting aggressive. The rest of the Saints are going to be able to support them. But already the core is going to slide in just one more point away from taking this first game. Can they pull it off? We're going to have to see whether or not the Saints have any tricks left up in their sleeve that they can pull out to reliably steal this one away. Emperor getting already aggressive, committing the barrier, but they're going to be able to return that in kind on the side of their opponent's team. Shiro is going to be playing defense there, but one of the barriers is going to go down. Only, both teams only have one left, and they're <laughs> diametrically opposed, it seems, on the opposite sides of the map. So close. They're pushing Shiro, almost missed it, but they were just a little bit off the mark. Emberred is going to get pushed back. Low HP now. Oh. Core flip. Oh, oh it missed! The barrier, but just barely missing it. Now Shiro is going to have full control of the bottom side. Going to try to line something up for Emberred. Bouncing back. Not even going to have to have available. Worrying for that one. Core flip is going to get super delayed. And in the midst of all that chaos, barrier is going to go down. Available now just has to worry about defending this barrier and allow his team to to keep pushing and playing aggressively. Shiro now in the middle field, getting aggressive. Core flip's gonna go down, bouncing into the center. Shiro's gonna bounce up, looking for an opportunity to get their goal of their career. Now, oh no. shot up. No, bailable, saving it. It's so close, but oh. the bounce from the big member of that team. They're gonna jump forward and stop it down to Big Anna. Gonna get that one in a beautiful and impressive fashion. We could not get closer, ladies and gentlemen. We are one point away. This is the deciding one for both of these teams to take a game one. Bouncing up Shiro, getting aggressive now with Emirates supporting them. They're gonna be making rotations. The barrier is still gonna be standing. It's so many, so close calls available. Oh You're insane. He's God. gone ultra instinct. He's not gonna let it slip. But finally, the barrier is gonna go down. Shiro's gonna get the one in return in kind. Now, Black Hole is gonna be influencing this course subtly, but the barrier is down for both teams now. Just one more remaining. Emberred gonna use the gravitational pull to his advantage to pass it down to Shiro. Now, they're gonna be playing in the face of the goalie. Emberred with the perfectly timed right click is gonna force it down Shiro the it's gonna be bottom side with Emberred core flip right in the middle but he's gonna get pushed back to the shield but he's still there in front of them but it's gonna get pushed back now he's gonna get eliminated the respawn already Saints are down one member for another eight seconds Shiro and Bailable against the world for five seconds can they at least get the barrier in their moment of need no Emberred is back and is a force to be reckoned with that the slime is gonna despawn just before the core meets it it's so close Bailable is getting assaulted, pushed down in the net. The barrier is still standing, and with the slimes coming down from oh, heaven, available no! somehow, awarded with the victory. The slimes are gonna betray their master, and the Saints are gonna take that first game. Wow, that was insane. So close at the end there, but Saints do manage to pull it off. Very, very good place. I mean, I was. I was on my toes looking at that one. Holy, and you were spazzing out. But <laughs> on the side of League of Legends, let's look back at the draft here. So we have an Orn, a Vi, an Oriana, a Kaisa, and what I think is a Rakan uh, mm -hmm. for the side of That's Sinclair. That's LeBlanc. Yeah. That's LeBlanc? That's LeBlanc. Oh my god, you were right. <laughs> Ain't no way. I swear I saw blonde. I mean, there's an Ezreal, so there's blonde somewhere, but I'm, I, I, the first blood, it said LeBlanc, like LeBlanc's face was there. You know, I've, I've seen LeBlanc a lot in my time. So how did it. I see that as Swain? I'm interested, I want to kind of dissect the brain now. I'm curious how that- You know what, I think it's because of the, oh, hold on here. Speaking of, the LeBlanc gets a kill onto the Vi here. Uh, yeah, not, uh, Vi doesn't have the priority in her jungle, which is not ideal, but yeah. I think I think it's because LeBlanc faces one way and Swain faces the other in like their pictures, right? So I was thinking that LeBlanc's face was Swain's hair. I think that's what it was. Oh, I see. Because Swain was facing the. Okay, yeah, that's what happened. But yeah, uh, I still win. 
yeah, you still win the bet. Uh, but yeah, looking at how things are going here, WSU kind of living up to the predictions that I gave. Uh, definitely in the lead right now. We've got a 3-0 and Ezreal, a 3-0 and LeBlanc, and a 2-1 and Rek'Sai being an absolute threat on the rift right now. Orn, though, he is kind of uh, keeping... He's keeping up with the Cassante. I mean, Cassante might be 400 years, but Orn is 200. You know, it might be half the years, but it's still pretty good. Um, but yeah, no, Cassante definitely a hard champion to uh, master and to go up against in lane. But wow, those Mantra Qs in the bot lane are really annoying. Flashing by Rock, I'm gonna get the up, uh, the Airborne onto the Karma. Karma will end up falling to the Kaisa. Getting a kill on that ADC, some much needed gold here. Uh, as we can see, the Ezreal already has almost his Essence Reaver completed, whereas Kai'Sa only has a pickaxe and two long swords. I mean, that's that's not ideal here. And even on the CS side, 61 to 83, oh, or 84 wow. now, that is not good. You don't want that. Even um, in the middle lane, you know, Orion is pretty far behind there. Yep. Uh, 72 to 82. Ooh. I know Zaku has been uh, grinding a little bit of tech and Hopefully it's not distracting him from his mid lane duties <laughs> in uh, League of Legends. But I'm confident that the Saints are going to be able to find their footing throughout the series. They, I, I, I would be remiss to say this is the first time I've seen this. I know I've seen the Saints kind of struggle to start the series off, but then kind of come together and pull through after they are able to adapt to anything. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I said during the intro. So I know for a fact this is going to be able to come back a little bit stronger after this first game if they do end up losing it. Yeah, but well, Gasundi here just being really annoying against the Orn as Rek'Sai picks up that dragon. That's two dragons on the side of Weber State University here. Just really being a pest. Uh, you can't really do much. Oh, hold on here. Vi, you might be... Yeah, she, Vi biting off more than she can chew, getting tower dove and killed by the LeBlanc, but oh, does end up getting the kill back on the Rek'Sai. side. So that's a big shutdown going into the hands of the Vi, getting her that much needed Sundered Sky first item, uh, which... Uh, I mean, healing is really nice to have, at least, sure. you know? And don't want to die. <laughs> just based off of the state, economically, and map control-wise, how, how do you feel that this game's gonna go for either team? And just, how do you see this going for either of them? Well, so, on the side of Cyclair Saints here, they need to recover. Uh, first of all, the lost money that they have, because they are really far behind in gold here. As hold on here, there's a dive going on. Rock on trying to get the airborne on to the Ezreal, but only manages to get the charm off of the quickness. But not going to be able to find anything here as the fight comes back and gets the kill. Ezreal picking up the Kaisa and ooh, speaking of uh, Rexa here grabbing the grubs as the uh, Oriana gets killed by the LeBlanc here, but on the side of Call of Duty, it's a 2v3 here. As oh, hold on, make that a 2v2 here. Angles are being peaked, people are being rushed. 2v1 now, and uh, yeah, ECPI University here, not a really good situation. They gotta watch out, play smart, hold those angles. Make sure that the objective don't fall. It's really dangerous here, though. How are they going to play this? They got to play this smart. Lying down here, holding the angle. Okay, so they got to wait. Oh, hold on here. Never mind. It's a 1v1. Okay. Well, 1v1 makes things a lot easier. I mean, 1v1s are like the, the, the existence of Call of Duty at the end of the day. Um, oh, hold on here. He does find him. Holding the angle does work out for him. St. Clair College does get the win in Call of Duty here. Uh, as we can see, I mean, that Stop. win there was you kind of huge. And look at that final kill. Yes, the turn. angle was beautiful. It takes down uh, back home. Yes. The side of the <laughs> but ooh. if he does not win that, yeah, that gun does fight, not look good on the side of St. Clair. Orn can dodge the airborne, though, um, with his uh, breath. Known. The problem is, oh, hold so on here. Kaisa might have been a little bit underextended, but doesn't matter to the Rek'Sai, as he is going to dive that and does end up getting the kill on the Kaisa, but Rek'Sai left really low here. He's going to watch shout but ooh, yeah LeBlanc gonna get the kill onto the Oriana there that bot side for the side of St. Clara is not looking good here one in three oh and three mm -hmm. you do not want to see that I mean not at all oh but you might 
definitely not want to see Greg Gorilla going down once again. But like like you mentioned, like this Swain six zero oh, and three, a complete force to be reckoned with. You know. <laughs> okay, uh, don't rub it in. Swain is a strong <laughs> champion, and they're playing it to the absolute effectivity that's capable of it. But Gojo getting stunned and rooted up, trying to flash over this wall here, punching. Swing through, they are able to get out of this sticky situation, but hopefully Swain doesn't go through and try to find the game because that would be very deadly. But in fact, that's exactly what's going to happen. Swain dashing up twice, getting the Swain bolt to take down Gojo, and now that's going to be another kill for the Beaver State University, but the team fight underneath the tower. But they're going to have reinforcements coming out through Rakan. Going to get the knock up, but he is going to get knocked uh, down in response as Swain cleans him up and takes that team fight for mm. Beaver State. The Saints are definitely not in a good position right now. I don't know how I feel about that one. Like, the, the original fight was kind of meh, okay, not really Saints style, but the Rakan was just like, hey guys, bye guys, and died. <laughs> Basically, yeah. But I saw him, I was like, oh, like the Saints are here, like they're gonna fight, and it was him, I'm like, oh. Wait, the Rock Hunt didn't bring the Kaisa? Oh no. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, I was just like, okay, well, uh, I guess he missed the memo, but now, yeah. speaking of memo, we're gonna be moving over to St. Clair College versus ECPI University on Search and Destroy. Saints are one round away from taking this game. It's looking to be the case, though, that coming they in from St. Clair has been very, working very perfectly, or at and least here the esports class commentary. They are going to be ones covering the stream, but for now, this is our territory. The Saints are going to be able to take this down. In fact, now dead silence. But oh, the Holy Bringer is going to go down. Shu is going to be the last member standing for the scene, but it's going to go down. St. Clair College is going to take that round and take this game over for St. Clair College. Yeah, I mean, St. Clair College kind of being ahead in terms of Call of Duty. Uh, they're, they're, they're known for being pretty good. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Just, just a little. Just a teensy-weensy-weensy bit. Uh, but yeah, they're they're playing really well. They're playing clean, and we're seeing it in their gameplay here. 6-2. to two. Definitely. Siri. Pardon me? I said shout out to Siri, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, Siri pulling. He's done a lot of work with the Academy guys. Uh, respect him a lot, and he's also showing that Academy is very strong in Call of Duty as well. But speaking of very strong, we also have our Counter-Strike team. They are four rounds down to Fanshawe. We are now over on Overpass. The Saints showed that they are not able to work too well on this map as we saw on Sunday when they were playing against you, Windsor. But, you know, they they are able to still put up a good fight. And Omega Strikers underway as well. Two well, to one for this me. first round. And sorry, Swain got a kill on Orn over there at the top lane. The very <laughs> good, strong showing. Now, Gabriel, I know you want to talk about League of Legends. And that's going to be the game we're probably going to be able to look at the most. But a goal over for Ember Red on Omega Strikers, taking the Saints for the first round. But we're going to be able to see a lot of League of Legends tonight. But before we kind of focus on the more uh, twitchy games, what are your last <laughs> thoughts before we head over onto the other ones? Oh, back to team fight pulling out for you just to give us a good, a good vibe. Yeah, here, big team fight. We see the Vi Ultimate coming out, but Cease and Assist not going to hold anybody down. Kasante pulls to 200 years and going to assassinate the Vi. Uh, no, Kasante is a tank, guys. Kasante is a tank. Um, but <laughs> yeah, LeBlanc are going to decide to split push too. This isn't an AD LeBlanc, but she will be split pushing. Uh, let's just add that to the list of things that LeBlanc can do, even though she's AP. And uh, yeah, we're going to see here Blue Turret in the mid lane. Going to go down. This. Ooh, does. Does she get another charge? Scuttle crab, or well, major scuttle crab does get a charge, a second charge. So yeah, the hip turret is not looking ideal. Um, we're seeing here, St. Clair College gonna lose their entire jungle too, uh, to that push from Weber State University. I I I'm gonna call them WSU. I think I think it's a little shorter. A little um, <laughs> wait, oh no, poor Rockon. Well, Rockon's gone. How, how is Swain allowed to get away with this? <laughs> Oh, I'm never gonna live this one down, am I? <laughs> you will not, I promise. I'm sorry, that was just really funny. It was the funniest thing in the world to you. Like, how is this guy calling LeBlanc Swain? I'll let you go. I'll let you live it down. It was a, a visual misinput, okay? I guess so. But like I said, you know, if you just had to kind of wrap up that series in a nice, neat little bow before we focus on the more action packed games, how would you kind of summarize? In fact, speaking of action packed, we're going to get a huge elimination on the side of Overstrike Omega Strikers. But again, just wrap that one up for us. I mean,. Lots of action going down for League of Legends, but yeah, on the side of Omega Strikers, 
things are looking. I mean, for now, this seems like lopsided. Yeah, I mean, the Saints are able to get a good amount of eliminations, but they've lost their goalie. He's going to be able to respawn now, though. Ember Red and Shiro doing great work to make sure that they are able to pull it down. And Counter Strike as well. Saints are just flying for any little bit of strength that they can muster within their ranks. But now we have Shiro and Bailable just rallying things back and forth, not trying to give anything over to their opponents. Ember Red just trying to keep them off of him it just it's so overwhelmingly there's so much pressure when you're playing on this map because you know that those cannons can go up at any moment and speaking of i think they're getting ready to shoot right now so you always have to try to keep the core in a favorable position on your side of the map and kind of split things on down along the line because if that cannon can really mess up your offense. I think the Saints are doing an excellent job at keeping it where they want it. And it kind of shows, you know, they have two points already and already won one set in this match. So I think they might have that X factor to give them the edge on this map. Yeah, but uh, the advantage, speaking of, is kind of gone now since they just opened up their net and they don't have their opponent's net open. So again, they're going to be at a disadvantage. The water cannon came into play there. The Saints yep. knew it was coming and they just played top right. They didn't go for anything too crazy. No special plays. They just sat there and kept it cornered off because that allowed them to kind of gain some momentum and kind of replay around after the cannon kind of shot. But now Ember Red and Shiro so close to getting that barrier. But ooh, committing it available gets the explosion off in time to keep his goal safe. But that's, I forgot the name of this character, but I know how she makes me feel, and that's angry because it's just so oppressive what she's able to do with her ultimate. Can literally just walk up to you, hold it down, and if you're a goalie especially, there's not much you can do, but you just have to take that damage, and it can be a significant amount. Now, overtime once again, Ember Red goes for the corner, oh. he's gonna get stuffed, had that perfect timing over on Asher. But Shiro and Ember Red rallying forward, they really just need to get this popped open. But this Asher's doing such a good job of keeping out of those cannon. He's gonna go off, keeping it sectioned off. It's not gonna last too long though. Shiro is able to almost get that barrier down. I thought that was really going their way for a second. Core flip, allowing it to get the rebound, but it's gonna get intercepted. Available is gonna rebound that back. And Red oh, in the at the perfect time. Can he get the shot into the net? No, with the core flip on the Asher is gonna kind of reset it. Now, the Saints are gonna be playing on the defense side. The core wow. flip on their side now. Cannon cornered it Ooh. off, and the rebound with the slime is going to take that game for the Saints. Very well played and well coordinated. They're just one round away from winning the series. Yeah, lots of core flips coming out in that last little bit there. I mean, it was flip after flip after flip, and it eventually got in. I mean, the goalie almost got the core in, <laughs> like, from the back lines there, which, I mean, usually doesn't happen there. It didn't happen either. But, I mean, it got pretty darn close. <laughs> they, they got really close, and as the draft kind of lasts out, we have the... Uh, we have Ember Red picking up Cast to last. I really like that pickup because the way he's playing is just picking up and utilizing his debuff so effectively and allowing him to remain, remain uh, maneuverable alongside Shiro. And I feel like that's the, one of the bigger parts of their general game plan. It's just to be able to get to where they need to be reliably. Shiro going for um, the, uh, the buff to their creation size, I believe. And again, it's going to allow them to get those pickoffs and eliminations so much more effectively. Ember Red in the right moment, but mistimed it just a little bit, not able to get that core stuff in. Bouncing it back up now. Ember Red in the, in the net of the enemy team. Shooting it forward, trying to get the rebound. But it's not going to work out in their favor. Oh! Oh, indeed. Trying to kind of <laughs> stuff it up. Ember Red just showing the oppressive nature of this character. The ability to shrink your goalie on command is such a scary thing to have to keep in your mental stack if you're playing against her. Era is such an oppressive character if you know how to play her right, and with the ultimate as well, if you have the read on the on where the core is going to be and how it's going to Wow, that's a lot of damage. Really just guarantee a goal. So Emperor making the right play. Ooh, ooh and that one was a little bit of a long shot, but it is ultimately going to result in Shiro going down. Emperor available, and now they are both missing both of their jelly ladies. Both of them are going to be respawning now. Shiro back in the game. Slime is going to be in the game here. Hera is going to get the movement speed buff. 
but missing uh -oh. Shiro <laughs> with the emote. <laughs> Rest there. Uh, a little bit of a frustration there, but Emirates stuffing it in with the beam of despair. Gonna take that first goal for this round. Yeah, very, very clean there. A few oopsie daisies, but I mean, they have been. Uh, Saints team would actually be thrown up a little bit. Like to see that. Yeah, oopsie daisies are part of the game, you know, and I think especially in a game like Omega Strikers, it's your ability to react and adapt yep. to those oopsie daisies to kind of separate the good team from the bad team. But like Holy. I said, oh, uh, Vice, I believe her name is just that ultimate is so deadly. And don't get me wrong, I love playing her because of it. But the water cannon showing a little bit of revenge, showing the power that it's capable of is going to eliminate her karma, Ooh. if you call it. And that karma could be so effective for the Saints as they are now two points up against their foes and they could be taking the series away in this next goal here. But it's gonna have to be hard fought as they know their opponent team has demonstrated that they're capable of giving the Saints a run for their money, but they just have to put their money where that mouth is and just make sure that they can stick around for it. But a little bit of a miscommunication maybe allowing that barrier to open up immediately, but now it's just gonna be one for the Saints and I mean, that was that was incredible, but yeah. I mean, we're going to move on here to uh, CS2. Uh, CS2. CS2. <laughs> yeah, CS2. Something's gone on with the uh, the Call of Duty game, but the Saints took that one. Uh, another round for them. The Saints actually taking their first victory since we last saw them. You know, they were on a little bit of a lost streak. Yeah, six true. to one. So I believe it was four to to one or three to one when we last saw them then six to two now so the saints have been battling their demons against fanshawe but it seems they have the power to rebuke them because they are coming back in this series take trying to take a look here at the state of the economics can't really quite make out the numbers but i can make out the guns got some ak's for the saints but the rest are glocks some shotguns on the side of fanshawe Ooh, and the rest shotguns. Are so one shotgun the nova namely but this fanshawe feel definitely going to be feeling some economic pain because they are definitely playing an eco round i don't know if it's by choice or out of necessity but the Saints are going to be able to kind of make the most of that situation and force them out, force this round. Andy with three kills here, getting Oof. up another one, four to take this round for the Saints, six to three. The Saints are now be looking better than ever. You know, they are really taking the momentum that they got off of that last round win and are carrying it forward. Yeah, well, I mean, momentum is pretty easy to keep when uh, your opponents have pistols, but here the opponents will no longer be running pistols. They're going to be running a full buy, I believe. Uh, we're seeing here some M4s and an the op, op mm -hmm. coming out. I, is that an SMG? Yeah, that's a uh, UMP5, UMP, yeah. I think, uh, coming out also. <laughs> Rice, uh, yes, has DC. And I was a little confused. He had like $7,200, but didn't spend a dollar of it. I'm assuming the DC is probably why. Uh, uh, but yes. he's going to be out of this round. The Saints are still going to have to fight to stay in this one. The op on to G's is going to give them the opportunity to find a good pick off, but they're not going to find it there. Petro is able to make it up to park untouched but it's still going to be scary nonetheless to find one who's just waiting around that corner. <laughs> and whether or not he's going to be able to find any kills there, we'll have to wait and see. But the flash coming out, allowing him to swing, but nobody was there, nobody was home. But they're still going to be pushing through lower park now. The rest of the Saints are there too. They don't run into the Defiant One or any of the Fanshawe members just gonna go oh, the frag grenade finds them taking Ooh. at least 30% if I'm just looking at those yeah, red lines, about right? Hey, I was right. 71. Let's go. Let's go. And the Saints are now going to take this opportunity to go through the flash. They're going to self-flash a little bit, but the swing is going to come out nonetheless. Miggy's going to go down to the Defiant One, but from behind, it looks like the Saints might be able to get the opportunity to get the jump on him. But the Defiant One is going to still be there, standing strong as the Opera on Fanshawe is going to be able to take down one of the Saints. But Ooh. Petro finding two, pushing his way onto the site, seeing if he can find the Opera, and he does! Petro taking down one member of Fanshawe at a time, clearing a path to the site for himself. He's the last one, mem He's the last one standing for the Saints, Thought he was going to go for a cheeky rotation, but he is going to stick to his ground. Tyler is going to be able to find the kill, put him down, and take the round for his team. 
Yeah, no, not ideal there. Saints losing uh three to seven here, so it's not ideal for them. Uh they they do have a comeback angle, but it is before the swap here. So we're gonna see how that one plays out here. As you can see, economy wise, we're seeing a full buy on both sides. An MP5 or yeah, an MP no. Is that a mech? No, that's a no, just an MP9. It's an MP9. Wrong it's a number. Mac 10's slightly more mature cousin. The oh, okay, it's a okay, little okay. Bit more, again, this is just my experience, but it's a little bit more accurate uh, and a little less scary close range. It's a nice little meaty middle ground. And in fact, it's also the only Mac 10 like gun that the, uh, the counter terrorists can afford to purchase. They don't have access to the Mac 10. Oh, but wait. now. As we're going to hear the beautiful sounds that Overpass offers the ears of the listener. Petro going to be rotating up through that hallway. Connected. Island is going to pre-fire a little bit, but he's going to find Nicky waiting for him as he's reloading. Pre-fire oh, no. at your own discretion, but it might not work out in your favor. It's the lesson that he's going to learn there today. Jacob is going to be holding strong here with that MP9, waiting for an opportunity to light anybody up. Tyler's going to find two, one of them through the smoke. Third now for Tyler, fourth now for Tyler. What a beast he is. If only he was as good at Dota as he was at Counter-Strike, our Dota pub sessions would have been beautiful and legendary, but they didn't go that well. Uh, <laughs> much love to him, but showing that he's a very skilled Counter-Strike player for sure. Uh, yeah, I am, uh, I mean, uh, his plays in Counter-Strike are definitely terrific. I don't, oh, yeah. uh, I, I don't know what you mean that he's you don't, you don't need to, you don't need to know what he's like in Dota, but okay. he knows, he and makes I know. Up, he makes up for his skill in CS by uh, his, the lack thereof in Dota. Is yeah. that it? It's a zero-sum game. You gotta you got allocate, allocate your points right, but Cheese allocates his point right into JBH's chest with an excellent off shot, taking out a state for free at the start of the round, completely shutting down their momentum with the JFK experience. Uh, a very scary name for a sniper rifle to have but it's only a matter of time before the Saints are able to find the momentum that they need to kind of shut them down or they could face a wall there just like that grenade tossed out by Saint did don't think that was intentional like that but the oh, dying one finding JBH through the smoke it's such a scare I don't know why the Saints are forcing this point so hard I feel like this might be part of their strategy potentially but pushing up through here with no util is such a scary thing to do especially without the flash or anything but they are going to suffer for it losing one for that push. Now Petro is going to be creeping up, crawling up, seeing if he can find any heads to click. But to find one, playing patiently. Whose head is going to get found oh, first? Petro oh. is going to find his light ones for head first. Two are going to go down on site. It's completely open for the Saints. They're going to pour on and get the plant coming up from behind. Is going to be. Nylander, see if he can crawl up and find anybody astray. Tyler as well, going to be up for Fanshawe still. Todd's going to find Andy with the AK one tap. Beautifully done. They're going to be trying to come up to find if he can get an opening onto the bomb. They're both approaching from the back. Tyler in the park area. They're both off site. But they find Nylander, he was running in a straight line, acting as an information source, okay, for his team potentially, but Tyler is gonna go down, and that's gonna be the round for the Saints. We're looking at a completely mirrored scoreline from Mirage, with Fanshawe taking eight points, and Saints holding on to the scary looking four. Yep, and yep. last time the Saints won. Yes. So this time, Fanshawe win? Pattern recognition is one of the things that human beings are very skilled at. But while we might be able to look at that and indicate that Fanshawe is going to be able to win this game, I feel like the way the Saints have been playing and adapting to their play style is very indicative of the fact that they're going to be able to really uh, adapt even more to Fanshawe's play style on this map. Again, like I was pointing out, the, the way they were pushing a so aggressively just walking up there with no util they can't do that on ct now because they're not pushing on ct they're defending so plays like that aren't going to be able to happen when you're on uh, ct and andy going to be able to find one kill with his usp uh nightland is going to be able to find a return tyler is also going to go on the spray but nightlander finds wow. a shot onto andy with that tech nice so lethal gun but he's going to show how lethal it can be taking out another saint three kills for him now jacob is going to be able to find the plant and it's going to be a retake situation for the Saints. Yeah, and uh, when you play on this map, 
what side do you feel as the advantage? Uh, well, we're gonna see that JBH has a side advantage as well as Miggy gonna be able to find Nylander, gonna be able to defuse the bomb. But if we're talking team who has the favor here, again, my opinion doesn't count for much on the matter. Uh, I believe this map is relatively balanced or at least considered so by the wider community. I haven't heard much outcry about this one being notorious for being heavily favored to one side or the other. I could be wrong on that, but in any case, I do feel like it is very prone to baiting out risky plays because of the way the sites are connected. There's the opening through mid where you can go down the stairs and find the opening to the back and uh, center of B. And there's also the one behind CT spawn where you can go down the stairs and have access to the sniper's nest as well as the uh, door that can lead to it. So if you're feeling really brave as a D side, you can try to go for a lot of secret rotation, but um, similarly for CT, you might be able, you might be baited into making unnecessary rotation that can cause holes in your defense. Tyler, with the help of a flash, is going to be able to find JPH in the midst of the chaos. Yeah, and each other? Uh, yes, they are boosting. <laughs> so that allows you to get through some cheeky angles that you might not be able to otherwise reach. But Jacob, just behind this wall, whether or not the Saints are aware of this is going to have to be found out shortly. Rai is going to find one before he goes down. But Petro almost going to be able to get the kill on Jacob with that Galil in hand. <laughs> and he just kind of really throwing caution to the wind there, quite literally jumping through and trying to see if he can find any shots. It's just Biggie left, and he's going to opt to save his gun, which I believe is a smart play. With only $50 in your bank account, you can't afford to be missing any guns, but he's trying to get over that fence. He finally gets through, and he's going to be able to run with that gun in hand. Not going to find any T wait for him. But if he goes over there and gets cocky, he probably would have died, but he decided to not peek over to not fly too close. I think this is the first time the bomb actually explodes. I think you're right. I haven't heard the bomb explode up until now. You're right, and thanks to those indicators there, we can definitely verify that at least so far, that was the first bomb explosion on this map. Um, on Mirage, I think, yeah, there was also no bomb explosion. So that's the first, I, I realized, yeah, I haven't really had the opportunity to talk about saves because nobody's been able to save. It's nope. always been defuses or uh, TDM, uh, TDM victories. No uh, explosions have occurred until just now. Excellently pointed out, Gabriel. Ooh, Molly gonna come out here, but they're also boosting, I believe. Uh, I thought somebody... Yeah, because there's only four markers here, so there's one on top of the other. Yep, you're right there. If you look in the B area, you can see that there's two indicators, uh, two arrows pointing out one's in a different direction than the other one. So I believe he's just peeking over into the sewers there, seeing if you can find anybody trying to rotate through to B. Not going to be able to find anyone, of course, as Fanshawe Fuel is going to be pushing up through Upper Park. And that's going to be a little bit of a Mirage mid, if you remember there. That's going to be the basically the, the parallel on this map. It's not going to allow as much flexibility to rotate as it would on Mirage, but in terms of having a straight sight line, and of course it does offer rotation flexibility still, so it's a good point to try to contest, but you definitely have to be armed properly for it, which I believe Fanshawe definitely are. The Saints, however, are not so not, much. <laughs> not so much, exactly. They're going to be uh, holding on to just a couple of pistols and one rifle, but the Deagles are still pretty good for holding that sight. But now, seems Fanshawe is ultimately deciding where they want to go for this plant. They only got 35 seconds left, and they are definitely outgunning the Saints. They're going to be pushing on to B-side, and the Utah's going to be coming out flashing, and Molly's going to oh. He's going to find the back of Tyler S's head. He's going to take him down. Almost can he find the next JPH finds another head too. They're all behind those pallets. The flashes, the nades, the mollies are all going to be flying out, but they're not going to find their marks. Petro finds another Miggy coming up from behind. The Saints are able to stop the push against all odds. And if they can just find one more shot after the defiant one, they take it and get the defuse to take this to six to nine. A very nice scoreline. Wow. Very well. Uh, Saints were the ones with pistols, right? All right. Well, uh, looks like pistols wins against full auto. To be fair, 50 Action Express does tend to do that to a person. I mean, Deagles just—they hurt. <laughs> 
they hurt when the one holding them has an eye as sharp as one of the Saints. But if you're looking for more action, something a little bit more analytical and slower, but still filled with magic and whimsy, we have League of Legends getting in the way. They just finished up their draft, and we also have Call of Duty for a little bit more of a slipping and sliding gunplay experience. If you want to watch either of these, you can go ahead and hit exclamation mark streams, type that out in the chat, and you'll get a nice list of the streams available for you to watch today. While we're going to be following the action still here on this channel, the Counter-Strike game is boiling over, and the Saints are looking to be trying to wrap up the series against ECPI University in that last Call of Duty game, potentially last if the Saints are able to pull that off. But now, back to the Counter-Strike action, it seems that Fanshawe is trying to find their footing and find a site to plant on. Yeah, no, finding those signs to plan. It's really hard. One of the reasons why I don't play CSGO is because, it, and Valorant, I can never choose which site to go on. I nice am, the decisions are one of the worst things you can give me. It's like, okay, choose this one or this one. Uh, well, that's like saying you don't know what lane to go in in League. You, you just go for the one that makes sense, right? You know, yeah. there's... At the start of the round, it's debatable. You know, that is a little bit more of a 50-50 situation, but even the way you spawn kind of indicates where you should go. But Tyler finds Andy is going to take him down. But realistically, whether or not you go for one site or for the other, it's going to come down to the state of the game. If you recognize that they have a lot of players on one site, then you're probably just going to push for the other one. And the way you can tell is through a lot of things. <laughs> Seeing where somebody isn't can tell you where they are in a game like this, and that's going to fall down a lot on your game game knowledge as well as your intuition and ability to read people. This is part of the beauty of this game. And part of the beauty of this game is needing to defuse the bomb. Uh -oh. 40 seconds on the clock. He misses the flash, but it seems that the Saints are just going to hold. And again, they're going to let this bomb go off. They're just going to save their guns because if you look at their dollars and cents, it doesn't sense. make, it doesn't make just economic sense. sense. Yeah, basically. <laughs> they're just holding on to a couple of pennies, rubbing them together. So every single gun that they can hold on to here is worthwhile and again in fact the last two members here for the saints are the poorest ones so yeah. at least their teammates are going to be able to buy some guns for themselves and take some action to the next round but if these two went down then it would, they would leave some holes in their offense for this one so fanshaw feel are going to be able to let the bomb go off here but the saints are going to be trying to bring the heat for the next round yeah, and uh, once they do bring the heat, because I mean, what guns do you think would be a good idea here if you want to build up your economy? Pretty, well, if you're trying to build up your economy, the best gun is no gun or a deagle, right? You go for something cheap, but I don't think they want to build up their economy. I do think they want to try to play aggressively here. We're going to see a deagle pick up by Andy, which is basically a discount op, a deagle pick up from Rai. Uh, in fact, yeah, just all deagle pickups from those who died on the side of the Saints, but they do still have two riflers. This is technically an eco buy. You know, they're still playing poor, but I feel like they're still bringing enough offensive force that they really can't threaten a uh, site. They are going to be losing two uh, members and now three thanks to cheese jacob going to find jbh petro is going to finally be able to take one at least but saints yes. are going to lose that one handedly but at the very least they're going to be going to this next round with a lot of money to work with to be able to fight um, on even footing and what i was going to say is you don't want to be down 11 because that's just a lot scarier but what is also scary is being run down at the start of this game the oh, saints no. are going to be able to find the first kill and it's going to be it Weaver went to the nautilus <laughs> well, no. they got a kill, okay? That's a lot better feeling if you're a saint than losing your last game, getting completely rolled. You got a first blood. Who cares for Ghost Analysis? All right, fair enough. Yeah, they did get first blood on that invade. On the karma, the support did end up killing the support. So I guess uh, support diff. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so looking at the draft here, we have an Aatrox against the Cassante in the top lane. So kind of a pretty standard matchup here. Mm -hmm. uh, something Cassante won't be able to. Uh, I was gonna say parry, but no, that's that's Fiora. Uh, will be able to unstoppable uh, most of that CC, but not all of it, thankfully. Uh, a Vi versus a Rek'Sai, so a repeat of last game. Mm -hmm. uh, a Twisted Fate against the Syndra, though, so we're going to see a lot of roaming on the side of WSU. Um, and then an Ash Nautilus in the bot lane for St. Clair College versus the Ezreal Karma from last game. Uh, so here, ooh, hold on, there's a little bit of a skirmish uh, in the bot lane going down. Karma going to be brought really low here. Uh, Nautilus just a little bit healthier than her. But not uh, not unscathed for sure. 
And here, I mean, one of the biggest questions that you want to ask yourself when it comes to this draft is what is the win condition? And looking at uh, WSU here, the win condition is the Rek'Sai and the Ezreal. Because, I mean, Twisted Fate, let's be honest, is very rarely going to be uh, like your, your your main DPS. Like, he's a side DPS, but he's not a main mm, DPS, we right? We appreciate your honesty. Yeah. Um... Although this is an APTF going for the electrocute here as Nautilus actually lands the dredge line onto the Karma, going to be able to root both the Karma and the Ezreal for a short duration, letting Ash deal some solid damage on both of them. Both getting brought really low, but here on the top lane, we have a little bit of a skirmish. Aatrox getting some good damage onto the Cassante. So, one of the things that I have to say, this is the exact same draft as last game if you're looking at... Um, Side of WSU, except for their mid lane. Their mid lane is the only thing that changed. Basically. But, yeah. On the side of uh, Call of Duty. On the side of Call of Duty, we see the Saints kind of struggling to wrest control back from this controls game, but they are looking favorable in this one. Three lives remaining for ECPI. Saints have seven and a lot of time left on the clock, or not a lot of time left on the clock for ECPI to capture the last point. With one second left and two lives remaining, the Saints are going to be able to take this game, and they're going to be able to remain in this. They need to get two more to win this game, but... ECPI just one away from taking at least one in this series because I believe the Saints are right now winning 2-0. So looking to be a, quite a challenge ahead of them. But speaking of challenge ahead of them, the Saints are giving one to Fanshawe University with no money left in the bank, <laughs> but it's a lot of guns in their hands and a heart as well. The Saints are hoping to hold out off of the offense coming out from Fanshawe as some torches coming out onto a site. Banshaw are creeping their way up to get the bomb planted. Yeah. Oh, hold on here. We have some... Ooh, we have a few kills coming out. Both M4s, but not on the same hands. Andy is able to take out Tyler thanks to Petro kind of buttering him up there. Rotation through connector now. Again, this is the value of holding out mid. You can really just slip and slide up and down between um, A and B. They decide that B, or sorry, A is looking a little bit too competitive for them. They want something a little bit safer, a little bit cleaner. Handing off the smoke grenade. Thank you, Val, for allowing us to finally do that. Gonna be able to throw out that smoke and allow Nylander to find a point. He's gonna get tagged up with one HP remaining. Rai is gonna be able to find his teammates. Nylander finds Petro, but ultimately is going to be put down. Saints going to hold three members left, and they're going to be hold, walking away with a lot of guns still. The, that matters a lot for them because they are far from being wealthy, but they can, their money can still go a long way in affecting their ability to win these rounds. A buy is going to come out from Rai onto JBH just to keep him in this game and they really do want to establish this dominance because they basically have no money uh rye is holding on to most of it but fanshaw has even less so they want to make sure fanshaw loses this round and they want to make sure they lose it hard because otherwise you know or if they do pull that off then fanshaw will probably lose the next round and maybe two and petro boosting up his team it's gonna allow him to find the pick off onto nylander <laughs> that's this is the value of it you know yep. you get to hold angles that you can't otherwise hold the enemy team isn't going to be looking there when they walk past it they're not expecting it so he's going to get taken out i realize you know you're probably more of a valiant person you've never seen something like that before but that's what these source games will let you do let you exploit the systems to your favorite. i'm familiar with source a little bit <laughs> but i'm more of a titanfall player Ah, oh, I see, and there's definitely no boosting that. You just jump on a Titan, you know? Yeah, That's I just hop on my Titan and have fun. <laughs> Andy now just creeping over to A. The upper park seems to be a little bit... Yeah, they're basically, again, a pawn, just taking up one square at a time, just pushing the offensive line up and getting them information. They know that upper park is still safe for them. It's a little bit of a respawn point. Even though there's no respawns, it feels like you can always just come back there and try to re 
recoup and push if they really want to. They're gonna go back for the bomb. Whether or not he's gonna go through mid or upper park, he's gonna have to decide here and now with 30 seconds left. Not a lot of time to decide. You have to go for something. Tyler is gonna be creeping up. He finds Andy as he hops up onto the box. And that's gonna be the opening that they need. The rest of Fanshawe, they're gonna start using the utility and they start making their way up. But Miggy hears them walking around outside. He's gonna turn his attention. Oh, yeah, he's gonna turn around. He knows that they're right behind him. And he's gonna find one, now two, to end the round for the Saints. We're 9 to 11. The Saints are coming back strong in this series. Yeah, this is the comeback angle right here. And I mean, that flank, well, okay, it was like an unintentional flank. Everybody went right by him and didn't care to check the little area that they? he was in. They don't in. have the time, yeah. Like, it's, like you said, like they can't check there nope. because they have. 20 seconds left. One of the guys found the pickup. It's go, 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 go time. You're not going to take the time to check around, but the Saints are, in a matter of what, two CS go rounds? Are able to take another point, and this could be the last game of the series, I think. Again, I believe St. Clair is 2-0 against ECPI University. Not quite sure on that. We haven't been able to follow the reaction, but the eSports students have been covering the action on that stream, so if you are watching, you'll know more than I what the scoreline for this series, but First Blood going the side of EC CPI. They're going to be making a beeline for B, and they're going to have a lot of progress. Two pips already. St. Clair College, it's looking bleak for them. They're already losing B at the start of the round, and just like that, now ECPI University has two minutes to capture A, and the Saints are already trying to scramble over there to pick up the scraps off of this round. Wow. Uh... Yeah, the Call of Duty is always a game that I struggle to understand because there's so much sliding, but it's hard to understand <laughs> how the inertia functions. Because I come from uh, a, a, a Titanfall and Apex yeah. background, right? So for me, you you got to run for a little bit before you can slide, right? Not you got to have game, momentum. Sir. But in this game, it's like, yeah, okay, I press my slide button, I go fast, and it's like, whoa, okay. They utilize uh, it to their. Uh, they utilize it very well in this game because it just makes you so low profile, allows you to slide through, gain momentum, as well as become a much harder target to shoot, uh, as well as still being able to shoot your target yourself. So sliding through these entry points gives you such a good advantage against your opponent. But ECPI University trying to get onto the point is going to get. Wiped away by St. Clair College, just going to clean off that slate with 130 left, no pips captured. B was a lot easier for them to take than A is right now. The Saints have found their momentum and they're sticking to it. They're not going to allow. They're holding all these angles down so perfectly. They're not going to let them get through any of these. We have Zarin watching this diligently behind the tank, but Shu is sliding around on the other foot. Going to see if he can find anything. The Holy Bros is going to take down Siri behind the truck. And that's going to be a huge opportunity to open up the site. It's going to be cleared up, but there's two Saints reconvening to try to find it there. Zarin, I believe. Yes, he is. He's going to go down, but Siri with the respawn and relocation is able to take him down. Now with 40 seconds remaining, ECPI University has to find their opening to get onto the point at least start catching at least one pip because it's going to be very difficult otherwise I find the headshot onto Zarin. Dispel is going to go down, but it's still going to be anybody's game realistically. If this is enough time, especially since the clock freezes while you're capturing it. ECPI just has to get one good push, but Siri is going to make sure that's impossible. He's jumping behind them. The Holy Bro is going to go down next. He finds a third. The Vortex. Ooh. He's got talent, and he's showing it to them. The slide is not going to be enough to keep you out of Siri's line of sight. The six kill streak now seven. Siri with the multi kill is going to be doing everything, holding the Saints on his back as he's going to be able to take them down an eight kill streak. So well performed by Siri. That's my guy. How many so do you need well for an AC 130? <laughs> I don't even remember, but <laughs> I can verify I've never gotten one in my life, but Siri, I know he's gotten his fair share. As you can see, he just really took control, rotated so perfectly, held every angle he needed to, and took this game in his hands. Whether or not that's the series for the Saints, we'll find out soon enough, but we're back to Counter-Strike action as the Saints are taking it to 11 to 11 on this overpass. Yeah, 11 to 11. It's close. I don't think we've ever seen an 11 to 11. Last game it went like, it was like 12 to 10 and then it went to overtime. Yeah, yeah then it went to overtime. 11 to 11. This is anybody's game here, but the Saints are in a much more favorable position. Like I mentioned, the economic play they made before, they wanted to make sure that everybody was healthy and had guns. 
to be able to kill anybody coming across on Banshaw, and it's paid off because Banshaw oh. has been <laughs> poor for so long. They have no money here to save. If they pull this off, it would basically guarantee them the game because Banshaw has to go all out here. But it's a 1v1 basically to determine the momentum, the angle of this game. If Saints win this, the game is as good as theirs. But if Fanshawe do them, they're still in the game. He couldn't be in a better position. Andy in the sniper's nest. The frags and come out to provide a little bit of a, uh, a smoke cloud. The Molly's gonna come down to put him down, force him off of that plant site. He's just out of his scope. And now the position that was once an advantage is now a bit of a prison. He's forced to come out of his comfort zone and jump down, make his presence known. He fires his gun to kind of mask. Where is when he gets the no scope? And he gets the kill, the no scope of his life, taking Fanshawe's oh. hopes and dreams with him, getting the defuse. They have a good amount of money to work with, thanks to that Lost Streak bonus, but it is still far from comfort. They're at most gonna be able to afford some AKs, maybe an op if you really feel like getting one, but not even because once again, you're gonna see a Mac 10 coming out from Cheese and Defiant One gonna get the AK. AK's on everybody except for him. Mac 10. He's gonna this tells you he's really just gonna wanna get in, get close, get information, potentially die immediately. But a valiant <laughs> sacrifice. Yeah, literally. It sounds like a joke, but at least the way I use Mac 10, I'm not sure if he's gonna try going about it the same way. You just kinda run in, try to get any kills you can, and that's also information for your team so they can play a lot more informed, a lot well. He's watching the long side there. Uh, there is a member of Fanshawe waiting on the left side. Hopefully he doesn't get swamped. But I'm still Reeling off of the beautiful kill coming out from Andy that one of them in that round and potentially one of the game. No deaths yet, but we find the first one. Cheese is gonna go down to Rice. Yes, the Mac 10 is not gonna be able to use the way it was intended. Sacrificial he, lamb. It was a sacrifice, but he didn't get to go out swinging with the with the with the Mac 10. The sacrificial lamb has teeth that sink in and they latch in hard so you at least want to take one guy down with you which is pretty easy to do with the MAC-10 but Nylander is going to catch the rotation from YCS now we're looking to be 4v4 the Saints are in a much more favorable position though because the bomb is down for Fanshawe but I think that's where they left it my mistake so they're going to be able to just come back pick it up make the rotation over to A side they decide that Ooh, B is a little too risky Tyler is going to be pushing up to upper park but Petro dropping through but Petro Ooh. is able to put him down Tyler you had that health. here's your opportunity but it's going to slip away and Mickey he finds two. It's just one left for Fanshawe. It's not impossible, though. He is fully armored. He has an AK, and he's walking slow, but the bomb is secured, so it's going to be really hard. If he pulls this off, then I absolutely think his team should do everything he wants because he's... Prove more balance, more than valuable. Uh, Petro coming up from behind. Jacob is going to go down in a very close game as well. One round away from being in overtime. But again, the Saints were able to play the economy game in such a way that, they, that their team has no real chance of getting the money to contest them in those last few rounds. The Saints are going to go to win out against Fanshawe. The rivalry is going to continue going strong. And I'm very happy to watch that game. But now we're heading over to League of Legends. Go Chance going to get to develop God like streak the saints are rolling over and going down the sun the gold car is going to take down the nautilus and the rest of the saints are crumbling gabriel i know a lot's on your mind as you're seeing how this game's unfolded for the saints kind of break this down for me yeah uh well there's not much to break down except for my spirit. fed rexi fed tf fed as real I, I, I there's a small pattern here uh everybody's fed Cassante's guy is 1-0, which, I mean, props to Aatrox for playing this one well, uh, but hold on here. The, okay, everybody went through the Hex Gate. Rexai gets the Airborne on one of them. Oh, great. Well, Ash is isolated. We all know where this one's going. Uh, Ash is going to get one shot because she's an ADC, and that's how her day goes. And then, ooh, Israel Ultimate here. Actually going to clear out the wave just to help uh, WS you to just push that tier 2 tower in the mid lane they will end up getting it which is nice uh but yeah Sinclair here is on the back burner you've got a Syndra with a storm surge an Aatrox with a sundered sky uh the Vi has ninja tab uh, sorry steel caps that's it uh, well she does have a taller she's working on her sundered sky okay there's the sundered sky Ash doesn't have her first item yet. She has boots, and Nautilus Nug Nautilus has Locket of Iron. So the only person without a, uh, a first item is uh, is the ADC, which is not what you want. But here, ooh, hold on here. 
Crystal Arrow will connect onto the Rek site. Rek site going invulnerable in the ultimate, but the shutdown will come through and will land Beautiful. on the Aatrox here. Aatrox going to get sent over the wall by the Aatrox, but in the bot lane here, we've got Syndra getting one shot by the TF. The chains from the Karma going to lock down, but ooh, hold on, shutdown coming through. Vi getting the TF, Ash getting the Cassante here. Big team fight, big shutdowns, lots of gold going to St. Clair here as the lockdown from the Vi will get onto the Karma. The Karma with those Mantra Qs and that chain will end up getting the kill onto the Vi. Yeah, um, getting one v one to buy a support that 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 never feels good. Yikes! But it's a Karma at least. You know you can't. Yeah, at least it's not like a Sona. <laughs> Then again, we're probably never gonna see Sona on pro play again. Uh, Copium. I, I wish. Sona's just so fun, but cool. she's like never there. I don't know. I wish she could come back, but let's be honest, she's too uh, simple of a kid to ever get into pro play. I mean, look, I, I'm more partial to the, uh, the defense of the ancients, but one thing I really appreciate about League of Legends is the stories they can tell and the characters. I love Sona's story. I, I wish she was. Uh, I wish she was a little bit more viable because I love to see that character a little bit more. But speaking of stories, stories being told in the scoreline for this series, Amber State University against Sacred College, 21 to 8 kills. I don't even want to look at the gold because Gabriel, I, I know you can tell me a story about what that means for the Saints on the network side. Well, yeah, the Saints doesn't have much gold, and uh, I don't think they got any of the grubs either. So it's it seems to be a void pathing for uh, WSU, but a drag pathing for Sinclair College since they do have two of the drags. But yeah, uh, the fact that the Cloud Dragon did go to WSU does mean that there was some negligence in terms of objective control, which isn't ideal. Um, but yeah, and just looking at the towers, WSU hasn't lost a single tower yet. And St. Clair is down to their tier, tier threes on two out of three lanes. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think. Like you see, these are the, these are the thoughts of a processing brain trying to calculate all right, all right. how you can win. And I'm cooking something here. So here's how I see this. This is this is real. Okay, this is real. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I want I want an Emmy for this one. Okay, if Gojo is able to catch off Karma and Ezreal as they're trying to do some combinations patterns, I think that could be the opening we need because Ezreal's a little bit scary without, or a little bit uh, vulnerable without that Karma. But now a team fight, huge one. The Rift Herald is going to be fighting that tower in the meantime. But what did I say? If Gojo can lock down a single member, that's going to be an opening for the Saints to pour out the damage that's going to get the kill. Then they find one in the midst of that chaos. Literally, like I said, they find that Karma. And that Karma has proven to be very deadly. So without the Karma in amongst, um, amongst their ranks, WSU is going to be in a little bit of trouble as they have to get out of this. But the dredge line is going to find Kasante. And next up, Goku Chan. Oh They're going to be that all going weak. down. Nala is leading the charge. Ezreal with the ultimate, but it's not going to be enough to deter the push from the Saints. Kasante is going to go down eventually. The flash out to save his life. Goku Chan is going to be running away, but Vi is giving chase with a flash. Oh. He's gonna knock him down with a shutdown. Huge gold swing is going to go the way of St. Clair College. The net worth is looking beautiful, but they find the Ezreal as well with the blast through. Can he get away? No! Gojo with the rest of the crew is going to roll him down, and you complain about the Gale going to the knowledge at the start of the round, but now it really matters. They're going to have the gold on the ADC. Very well played by the Saints, and they are still fighting to the nail for this game. Uh, there was a kill back, though. Z Z Z Zadox? Is that how they say it? Does end up getting the kill onto uh, Vi, so that's not ideal. But yeah, you were right. They did get a lot of shutdowns in that fight, and the gold is swinging their way, but there's still a uh, 9k gold lead on the side of WSU. So. Here's, here's, here's how I see this. Uh -huh. Saints have the ability to press a button and stun somebody, and that person is stunned. Nothing they can do about it. Wait, what button? Vi spot. Oh yeah, the R. Right? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And with that opportunity, that allows so many openings for reposition and other follow-up CC for the Saints. Fair, when fair. We look at the lineup for WSU. Who's a threat? Twisted Fate, Ezreal, and honestly, Karma. Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai, yes, but is that is that a threat to your Ash in the middle of the team fight? Yes. Yes. It's an assassin. <laughs> That's but your it's job. Not that big of a deal. 
like, I feel like the, the threats to your whole team, right? The threats to your whole team are the ones that you need to be addressing in deep play. And I feel like the threats to the whole team, uh, this specific Goku Chan can really kind of kill anybody. Same thing with this Ezreal. And I feel like the Saints have the ability to kind of shut down both of these champions in such a manner. As long as they coordinate themselves well enough, they really do have the ability to win these team fights, gold swing or not. They are still in this game. Fair enough. They do have a small CC advantage because, small. yeah, Tia. Well, I mean, Ezreal and uh, Rexai don't have any CC, right? Okay. Well, actually, Rexai does have an airborne, so never mind. But yeah, but I mean, it's like minimal, and you need to put yourself at such yeah, a big risk exactly. to land it. Like, never mind. That's one thing I remember for sure about Rexai. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the problem is the Rexai can lock down anybody, and with the fact that Syndra can't counter or like um stop Rek'Sai is engaged because they go untargetable. It's kind of hard here and mainly with the Baron buff now on WSU, they can't really do much. I mean that inhibitor already goes down. The top tower is going to go down. The world ender does get popped but Aatrox getting stun locked through the tower. Cassante pulling his ultimate. Gonna start DPSing because he's tanked more than enough for today. Sintra gonna get the kill onto the direct side but Ezreal going to pick up on that Nautilus as Cassante chasing down the Vi, going to kill her too, and the Syndra, because, you know, why not? So, right now, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be game for uh, St. Clair. Because, yeah, those Tower 1, Tower 2, and there goes the Nexus. Oof. Well, hey, my analysis, I think, was right. I think if they played those team fights a little bit more tactfully, they might have had a bit of a better chance, because they saw glimpses of it. What did I say? They just find the Karma at the start of a team fight, and then pick off the remnants of the side of WSU, but they just weren't able to pull it off in those last moments there. But I think they still had the chance, and not to disparage them at all, they played really well for how... Uh, how Behind they were. Yeah, how behind they were, how heavily the cards were stacked against them, pun <laughs> definitely intended, but they are going to lose that Twisted series 2 pun. and oh. But heading into the last game of the night, we have yes. Call of Duty. Who would have guessed? I mean... It is Wait, hold on. Game. Call of Duty last game. That has never happened before. Um, might have. Uh... The, re the, the joke I was going to make was that for such a fast game, the lobby uh, creation system definitely gives uh, a lot of downtime between games. So despite it being one True. of the faster titles, True. we are going to see it be the last one of the night. But St. Clair College are going to be against ECPI University and potentially the final game. But the spell looking to make that a little bit harder huh? to see as its first team to get 250 points on the hard point. You have to stand on the point to capture it. Yep. Um, and as long as it's uncontested, you'll be racked up the points. The hard, next hard point is going to be spawning. You can see in the mini-map bottom left. It's going to be spawning in the center, and ACPI University is already going to have their men all over it. It's going to be St. Clair College on the attacking side, rather, to try to take down this hard point as they've already locked this one down fairly strong, and it seems like there's even high ground to it, so it really will be like sieging a castle. Yeah, you can see number two there, the Holy Bros on like a, a building off the right of the hard point, just shooting anyone who dares approach, but the Saints are still getting scrappy with it. They are able to clear it up and make their way onto it. Not for long, they got one point for their troubles there, but Siri coming out from behind, showing us how deadly he can be in this game. Going to be rotating around. The Saints are going to have their feet on the point. They're going to be getting as many as they can on the high ground here. The Holy Bros is going to try to be a bit of a pest, but he's going to be taking some fire himself, doing a lot of damage there to Zarin, oh. but it's not going to be enough to take him down. That's when you want a grenade. <laughs> it is. He went for it, but he wasn't able to find anything with it. Siri and the rest of the Saints are going to be able to take the rest of this hard point. It's going to be spawning behind the Saints line right now, so they are going to have the advantage in terms of holding this one down, but ECPI University is still going to be rushing towards it. In fact, finding behind two Saints, a gunfight is going to go down, but Factions is still going to come out on top. Siri is going to be on point, throwing the trophy systems out to make sure that they're going to be able to secure this one, and no grenades are going to come in their way and stop this from being held. He sees the Vortex there. He's going to be able to take him down as well from behind the pillar, and this hole in the wall, the Holy Bros, is going to be in a little bit of trouble. You'd ever want to be in series uh, iron sights or gun sights rather. Jumping through. He thought he got that kill, that drop shot. He is on prone so he always looks like he's dead but he switched his target a little bit too early. He's going to go down. Zarin is going to find two kills now and the Saints are now in the lead against ECPI University in this hardpoint match. 
Yep, Saints uh, being in the lead is good for them, but they have to play this one smart. They still have to make sure they don't get too cocky uh, because one of the things that does happen is Call of Duty has a pretty short TTK. So you can just, uh, yeah. you know, spontaneously combust. And we don't like when those things happen. But more importantly is, oh, okay, well, speaking of spontaneous combustion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's me when I spontaneously combust. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Siri now trying to cause some more spontaneous combustion. And there he finds it onto Shu, trying to rotate around now. The hard point is in the Saints fashion, but they still have to rotate around to make sure nobody can find on their way onto the hard point. But the Vortex is going to find fact is going to try to get uh, pieces wow. as well. He finds it and is going to be sneaking onto the point in the corner. Zarin is going to be able to get his face shot in by the Holy Bro. And they're going to be taking this hard point as best as they can. The Saints are still trying to find their way onto it though. Yeah, almost at 150 points. They're 25-ish, 25, 26, okay, 25 points off now. Uh, a little bit less than that. So, yeah, Saints really holding it down. If they can just wait for a little teensy bit more, they take it home. But, yeah, they need to watch out, though, because their opponents are only 50 points away. So, 50 points isn't that hard to get, but, oh, my God, with the pistol pieces going to get a double kill. That is Wow, insane. Uh, as here, oh, hold on, I'm going to pick up a third kill. Wow. All right, one, two with the pistol, and then pulls out the AR, takes out three. A legend. A legend. Speaking uh, of a legend, Siri looking to maybe make a clip here. He's going to find one there. No one's going to be left, but behind Zarin is going to be able to get the assist with him too. Nade coming out, see if he can find him there. Not quite, but forcing him to retreat nonetheless. But sliding through, Siri finds him. The cruise missile is going to take down pieces. Zarin is going to go down as well, but the Saints are still holding hard onto this hard point. He's 155. It's looking bright for them. A very strong future ahead, but he's going to get stunned by the grenade. Siri holding this angle down, making sure no one gets through. He sees one coming around the corner behind the pillar. He's going to call out Ooh. the bluff, take down Siri, and hopefully make their way to the hard point. But with only three seconds left, it's not even really going to matter. They're fighting over dust and sand at this point as the next hard point is already up and the Saints have their feet planted on it. Yeah, trophy going down, making sure that none of that ordinance gets too nasty. And, I mean, the Saints are holding down their points really, really well right now, uh, making sure that their opponents can't get too much time on the point. And I mean, this I mean, personally, this is the time where I would pull out the shotgun and say, all right, time to clean up house. Uh, but of course, uh, GAs don't allow you to do that. I don't oh, think. no. The Vortex was <laughs> such was in such a good spot there, but Faction's able to take them down. Faction is also taking out Dispel. Saints looking to make their way to a clean 200. Just 50 left shortly. And in fact, they're going to get some more change here after this hard point. Still got 10 se 13 seconds left. They might try to get this to 213 before they start rotating. Contested point. The Holy Bros is going to be able to take it up. They're going to be able to get nice 7 seconds off of it. And in fact, already securing the next hard point. The Saints are going to have to be playing into them. And Shu is showing it's not going to be easy. Taking down series and factions one after the other. Uh, it's going to go down for him. Looking for a little bit of treasure in that corner. They're not going to find it. It's going to get taken out. Now, rotating over to the next hard point. Siri gonna find two. Zarin's gonna go down on the hard point, but it's actually the Saints are holding this. I thought that ECPI University had this one on lock, but no, the Saints steal it right from under their noses. They're gonna have to be, the Saints are in fact manipulating the spawns, I believe, making sure that they know exactly where they're gonna be yep. coming from. Two, Siri are gonna find before going down themselves. Zarin is gonna be able to take out the spell before they can even get their way outside of that building. The Saints, if they can get on the point anytime soon, they'd be in a really good position, but they're still fighting over. And now, if they can stick on it, never mind. <laughs> ECPI University is going to be able to take it back. Yeah, I mean, in these arena shooters, manipulating spawns is something that you just need to kind of get the hang of. And once you get the hang of that, I mean, you can't lose because you have the advantage on the angle. You know where they're coming from. They know where you're coming from, yeah, but you're the mm -hmm. one standing still that doesn't really need to do much other than click on their heads. They actually need to acquire a target, and you can always modify where you're camping that spawn, right? So once you get a hang of their spawn, and oh my god, he just got, like, triple bang there yikes <laughs> that is yes. 
Oof, for sure. Now, ECPI University is still fighting back. They had that hard point on lock. Saints are managing to contest it, but the Saints are now only just getting control of this hard point. They do have the potential to end the game with this hard point. If ECPI University doesn't interrupt them, then they could be the game. They are able to get the Saints off of it and start capturing it themselves, but the Saints could still win the game off at this point. Not anymore, mathematically at least. They will have to fight at least for the next hard point, even if they get the rest of this one down because they need to have 250 and by the end of this one they'll have around 241 they would need nine seconds on the next hard point in order to win the game Zarin is going to take down a stray straggler from ecpi university and they're going to make their way to the next hard point with 240 they need 10 seconds on this one and they're already finding it Zarin finding out rotations making sure that they can't interrupt their point holding and this ecpi university is able to slip their way in siri is going to get caught off guard with the pistol in his hand He's going to go down pretty easily. Zarin, seeing if he can find any stragglers, able to find almost one there, not quite before he goes down. The Vortex is going to take out a rotating Saint. 30 seconds left on this hard point. ECPI University with 174, but the Saints find their way on it. Five seconds remaining just until they Three, can get this game, two, but contesting it, the oh. Bastions is going to be... Oh, no! The Vortex able to find their point, but they're contesting it. One, One second left the Saints need. Zarin almost winning that gunfight in the game as a result, but Siri with a nade from long range, taking him out. Can he rotate over to the point? Factions is right in front of it, and they One are more. able to find the touch. <laughs> Siri not going to be able to be there for the victory but he was close enough as the Saints are able to take this last game in the series and take the series over against ECPI University. Wow. Yeah, that was... Uh, they were holding that last point, that, that, that last second for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, they just... Oh, they just couldn't. It was so close, but yeah. So I mean, for the last game of today, it was, uh, it was pretty good. Pretty entertaining. Pretty good, for sure. Um, and I'm sure that the... Uh, the Esports students broadcast team were yeah. able to put on a great show for all of you who decided to tune in for that one. And hopefully you enjoyed the show that we put on for you here on the main channel. But we had a lot of action underway, Gabriel. Let's try to break things down as we can recall it. Uh, Omega Strikers first to finish off. The Saints were yep. able to take that series 2-0. Struggled a little bit at the beginning. Yeah. But, you know, they found their footing and it was really close in that first game to end it off. But the second one, they were able to take it through and yep. just make it they're very convincing. They were kind of like put on their toes, and then they were kind of mm. like, "Oh wait, we need to play the game." <laughs> and then they started playing the game, yeah, uh, which was nice. And then on the side of League of Legends, uh, Sinclair College, living up to the prediction that I said, I didn't cast a curse. Well, be I, fair. I actually, I kind of cast a curse, but not really. I was being truthful this time. Use that power for good. Yes, I used my power for bad, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm done using my power for good. Uh, but yeah, so kind of living up to what I was expecting. Uh, they were kind of two losses in, and their opponents were two wins in, and they've never played this opponent before, right? So it's kind of one of those situations where you're looking at them and saying, okay, so are these guys like pro leagues, or are these guys like, yeah, hi, we're all bronze? <laughs> um, so in this case, I think they were all pro leagues, not bronze. Mm -hmm. um, so they, yeah, they, they, they would have curb stomped me too. And uh, yeah, on the side of CS2, I remembered. <laughs> it was a beautiful series all the way through. First game literally couldn't get closer, I guess, unless we went to a second overtime. But ending that one, I believe, 16-14. Yeah. Um, Fanshawe was just one game away from forcing the reset on the overtime. And the second game ended off 11-13, to going the Saints way on overpass. First map was Mirage. Uh, again, you know, a little bit of history between these two teams. Tyler S, a previous player for the Saints, now playing on Fanshawe Fuel, showing he did not make a mistake switching over because even though Saints ended up winning this time around, that team's shown a very scary very promising. amount of potential and that the Saints are having so much respect for that team. Every time they play a fan shot, it's, uh, you can feel the buzz in the air. The Saints yep. are always so excited to play them. So absolutely all the respect in the world to fan shot fuel. Excellent game coming out today. Saints are going to take it over on them tonight, but in the future, who knows? Yeah, you never know who's going to win between those two. Mm -hmm. And I, mean, I think that, that, that pretty much sums up the games that we have here. Uh, yeah, yeah Omega Strikers, University, Modern Warfare. Um, you know, yep. going to lose out to our Saints team 3-1. to one. Uh, Again, our Academy uh, Call of Duty team, they have a lot of uh, a huge 
amount of shoes to fill, okay? Not a big shoe, a lot of shoes to fill uh, from the varsity <laughs> team because the varsity team has so many accolades uh, that can be tried to be meant by the academy team, but it's a very tall order for them. But tonight, they're showing that they are capable of a lot with a very strong victory over ECPI University. And I'm very excited to see what more that team has for us. And I'm also very excited to thank everybody for watching us today. Thank you, yep. Gabriel, for joining me. Thank, thank you, everybody you. in the back. So many people today, not able to keep track of all of you. My apologies. But we thank you all for putting on this production. And of course, my favorite people to thank is our sponsors who make this show possible. We have Tim Hortons, HyperX, Subway, the St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. So thank you so much for making these shows possible. And we thank you once again for watching. Tomorrow we have CVAL action yep. starting at, I believe, uh, 12 o'clock. So you don't want to miss any of that going on. I know I'll be there. Hope that you will be too. But thank you for joining us once again tonight. Hope you have an excellent night and take care. GG.